just a little bit out of touch with public sentiment out there. They were bewildered. They couldn't understand it. They still can't understand it that we haven't embraced Chris Wells with all three arms and legs. That we haven't wrapped ourselves around him and just embraced him in his sandals and his Jesus lookalike qualities. And we just haven't said, oh, Chris, God, yet. They just, they're bewildered. They don't get it. I think don't get it is the operative term. We have two open lines on the out-of-town lines. That's Palm Beach, the uh, worldwide. Uh, by the way, I got all kinds of crap here today, which, uh, you know, not that I necessarily should, but I have all kinds of crap, including a great article about Paxton and Bud Fry and about how that soccer deal fell through and about how their attempt to become the minor league sports uh, empire builders uh, ain't going to happen. Wouldn't you like to be the great mogul of minor league sports that nobody cares about, like arena football and like uh, indoor uh, and like soccer? And uh, like AHL hockey, which nobody in this area cares about and will not, no matter what happens. And even if Wayne puts a team in Miami with AHL, nobody cares, even when Rochester comes. Go Amherst. All right. We got the top 50 uh, uh, party schools in Sports Illustrated this week. The t well, it's really the top 50 jock schools, but what's the difference, you know? The top 50 jock schools in America. Number one is UCLA. Oh! All right. Mark Harmon, God. Man, he sure used to look good, I'll tell you, when he was there. And what happened to him? Once he did that Ted Bundy thing, he never was the same again. Looked like an ass murderer. Goes to show you that nature can be mighty cruel, ain't it? How's Vince Ferragamo doing? Ugly? Here's Hollywood. Hello. Uncle Nachman. Yes, sir. I want to wish you a Zizan Yantif and a good Shabbos. Yeah, Kaxelhoys. No, Cut come on. Cut the crap. Anyway, speaking of those rejoins... Quit the Jew crap. What? I said, how you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Speaking of those rejoins, I think we should drop Go them. wash that beanie, by the way. People are starting to talk. It's schmutzy? Yeah. And the beanie, too. Schmutzig. It's schmutzig. Uh-huh. Anyway, I think we should drop those re rejoins together with that ski guy. Yeah. Oh, I it. haven't heard too much of him. How's he let doing? Me, let me tell you. He, I heard him on Saturday. I, no I, one would confuse this with a talk station. But yeah? Well, what makes you so damn sure? 610 WIOD. Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Oh, when man. When with us, the Palm Beach. What is that? 610 oh. WIOD. Why can't George do the rejoins? What? Why can't George do the rejoins? Why can't we just skip the rejoins if that's what we're going to have on the air? God, sounds, that stuff is crap. It sounds like the 50s. Exactly, like the 1450s. Anyway, I think we let's should... Let's have an inquisition about it. Let's throw them off the roof together with Ski, who after... Uh, I flipped them on after Shabbos while I was in the office. Yeah. And for hours, all he's talking about is this article by some rabbi in the paper, some Orthodox rabbi who was talking about... Jews and sex and that we allow it and we allow it. Yeah, I saw that. I saw it. I wouldn't Ridiculous talk about it. Ridiculous the Catholics are against us and this one's against us. For hours. <laughs> oh, he couldn't buy a call, so for hours and hours, the same thing over and over again. Really? So, well, see, that's that's the Walter Sabo format. Is you, you pick an article out, some insipid article that nobody cares about, like that thing about the engagement ring that uh, Aaron Kay was pounding on a few nights ago, hour uh -huh. after hour, and you just keep reading it over and over, and you insist that people call and talk about it, but even if they did. don't want to and they don't care. But nobody and, of did. course, every, what they don't understand is that while you're continuing to read it and bang away at it, everybody is turning off and gagging and puking and finding something better to do than uh, listen to crap that they don't want to hear about. They just don't get it, man. It, you know, I kept, I kept saying months ago, that these people, meaning the Paxson people, don't understand what this station is all about and why it's had this great success. Little did I know at that point how, I mean, even even me, even a cynic, a hard-bitten cynic like me, nah. I can't believe how little they understand what this place is all about. They have no idea what we do. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about Rick and Suds. I'm talking about people that used to be on this station. They haven't got a clue what we do here and why people listen to it. It's and ridiculous. they think that you can you can, you can can formulate it like, uh, like putting baby formula in a bottle and you can package it and it doesn't really make any difference who the people are as long as you do the IDs right and you uh, give the call letters a lot. These people People are nuts, man. They're out of their minds. Well, my I kiss the ground every, and I mean this, I kiss the ground every day that I had that, that my, Norm Kent, God bless Norm Kent, even though we don't belong on the air, but God bless Norm Kent for giving me the, uh, the sanity to take a couple of extra days before I jumped into bed for another five years and rode away the rest of my life for this joint. Because if I, if I would have signed this thing with Paxson and been tied up here for the next five years and then be sitting here observing what they're doing to this place, I would blow somebody's brains out. I don't think it would be mine, but somebody's. I mean, these people are crazy. I, I, worst thing, my two-year-old kid This, this consultant and his clone PD that they brought in here, between the two of them, they've got no more idea what this place is all about than the man in Uranus. It's, it's unreal. It's terrifying. It, it's worse than terrifying. My two-year-old kid can program better than these guys. God. Unreal. What no wonder John Ford ain't coming around here. Unreal. Anyway, just to plug one of your sponsors who you just spoke so highly of, I was down at Kendall last week for my first service on the new Camry. Yes. Met Frank and Mark. 
and they treated me like like a king. You mean I'm, Mark Jacobson? I met I met Mark. Oh Jacobson. my God! You met the man. I met the man. He says, Neil, I'm following him wherever he goes. I there said, you go. I said, you better. George needs that Camry. That's right. And we're not going to let him lose it. Okay. A forerunner. What? Zygazun. And Neil. Yes. Just uh, want to wish Saif the knife and Joe Lahav a and Yantif. Good Shabbos. And, and to cut it out, and Neil, regarding your trip, yeah. as we say in Yiddish, gay gesint and kim gesint. Okay. I love you. Gay this. Bye. Okay. We have an open line in Broward, 767-9463. Welcome to Jew Talk. All right. Oh, Exactly. Couldn't have said it better myself. We have two open lines on the uh, green lines, the Palm Beach lines, the worldwide lines. This, this is, every day there's like another surprise here. And it's not getting better either. Believe me, it's getting much worse. I mean, the sound of that stuff, it's like something from the, from the ancient IOD days, in which, which we play those old jingles as a joke. As a joke. Which is what this place is rapidly becoming, is an industry joke. Which fits right in with the Paxton image, by the way. One thing in life, at least be consistent. Nice going, buddy bud. Be consistent, baby. Let's get those numbers down into ones, and judging from this last book, well on the way. 1027 at WYOD. Come to the park and play Pompano Park. The uh, dining room, by the way, closes tomorrow night. Tonight and tomorrow night are your last two nights to have a great meal in the top of the park dining room on the sixth floor. The good news for you will be that starting next Wednesday, April 30th, the International Buffet reopens on the fourth floor in the clubhouse, and it is sensational. Fourteen ninety-five for all you care to eat. They got salads. They got soups. They got all kinds of entrees. They got Italian goodies. They got German. They got American. They got roast beef. They got Chef Ira's fabulous desserts. All you can eat for fourteen ninety-five. It starts at 6 p.m. nightly, and post time for the first race, of course, 7.30 in the p.m. We got simulcasting every afternoon and every night. We got racing from Dover, Yonkers, Hazel Park, Mohawk, Dania, Freehold, Meadowlands, Pocono, Windsor, and the Meadows, and, of course, great live racing, too, as in tonight, 7.30 p.m. It's TGIF Friday, by the way, with special uh, dollar uh, hot dogs and drinks and beers, et cetera, and so on. So get your ass out for a great night tonight. Fat Rich will be there touting and go to the bank on at Pompano Harness, Atlantic, and Powerline in Pompano Beach. Feel our pain. 610 W-I-O-D. I'm feeling it right now. Oh, my God. That is so boring. One thing that this station is not, or at least, well, it is now, during many hours of the day. But one of the things that we try, I mean, the worst offense you can do is be boring. And those rejoins and IDs are so dull and so boring and so lackluster and so idiotic. Does somebody really think that this is clever? Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, Walter. Of course, it's clever. It's like, uh, it's something. There's something there that we're just too stupid to understand, George. We just don't get it. We just, we just can't relate to the blandness. Wonderful Isle of Dementia. 610 W-I-O-D. I'm going to tell you, Steve Nichols starting to look like a genius, you know what? Okay, I know you're rolling your eyes, but Gary I'm telling Bruce you right now. Like Gary Bruce, is, well, now you're really getting carried away. Plus, that's too far back. My uh, memory doesn't... Uh, Gary Bruce, tied to the track in front of a freight train. That sounds pleasing to me. But uh, seriously, Steve Nichols starting to look like a, a rocket scientist compared to what's going on here. Since Peter the Tweeter and then this uh, new guy who... Uh, is he ever here, by the way? The new guy, Harry Penis, is he ever... Not that he has anything to say to me anyway, but is he ever here? After lunch. <laughs> what does that mean? What do you mean after lunch? Well, you know, I'm in here. He's not here before 10. Yeah. But uh, at 2 o'clock, he's out there. Well, he's usually. probably out there with some very important meetings, I'm sure of that. Probably some clandestine packs and business going on that we don't know about, of course. Here's a lady in Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, the two shows that come on after you yesterday did nothing but complain about the Take the Kids to Work Day. I was telling George before I was very lucky because his little girl is just, she's just a delight. Sabrina's bright and she's well, very polite and well-behaved. And if she does anything wrong, George smacks her on the side of the head and she doesn't do it again. And, I mean, she was just great. But so when I'm driving out of here, I'm wondering, what the hell's Rick talking about? He acted like the world was coming to an end. I guess everybody waited till I left because I'm the ogre, you know. And then once I left the building, they just turned their kids loose and they all went ape shot. No, it was going on during the show. Out oh, it was going on out in the hallway, but I couldn't see it, right? Where, where were the parents? The parents were sitting around oblivious. You've gone into stores and seen parents just wa standing there while their kids were, like, knocking things over and uh, eating food off the shelf. You've seen that. But, I mean, why wasn't there some kind of structured thing for these kids to do? Well, who would I'm sure who you have two, two booths. Why couldn't someone been in one of the other booths showing the kids how to run a program? Right. What it takes. Right. Doing mock interviews. Yeah. 
That kind doing of mock thing. interviews? Well, uh, or just know. doing mock IDs would have been good. Those <laughs> kids could have made some better IDs and rejoins. I, you know, teach them what it's like, what right. their business is like. Right. How to fill out a job application. Right. That kind of thing. Well, these were mostly little kids. I mean, you know, like six, seven, eight years old. Well, in the first place, I, I thought it was supposed to be like from nine years old up. Usually, there's an age limit in our office. Oh, is that it? Yeah. In our office, there was. Uh-huh. So, and, and the kids were structured. They they were taught how to do a, a job Not interview. here. Not here. Here was chaos. How to fill out a job application. Yeah. That kind of thing. And, and I have one other comment. Yes, ma'am. When is George Foreman going to hang it up? Yeah, let him just sell those damn lean, mean grilling machines and leave us alone already. Good point. Okay. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Yeah, I like George with his lean, mean grilling machine. I like that. I don't have one. Hey, by the way, George, you want to send me one for free? <laughs> I can't afford it. We have an open line in date, 6229463. Hey, listen, that's the one thing I've learned the 21 years I've been here. Free isn't so bad. What's wrong with free? I used to be embarrassed. I remember when I was at... Uh, well, a lot of places, K-A-T, W-N-W-S. I used to be very upset with Steve Kane because Mr. Ego always was a real freeloader. And now I say, hey, more power to you, Steve-O. What's wrong with being a freeloader? What's wrong with, like, uh, you know, what's wrong with hanging on to a few bucks? If somebody wants to give you something for free, hey, more power to them. Like that haircut there. Well, hey, look, I'm going to tell you, that was well worth it. She does a nice job. With all due respect to Miriam, who also does a great job, but she's like a mommy now, and she's too busy to be coming over here potchking around with us. But it was well worth it for the uh, 40 bucks that I coughed up, George. George coughed up 25, and he gets a free car. I got to pay for my cars. I also uh, put for, in. I also gave Lino five bucks so that he could tip her five bucks. Well, that was sweet. He's going to need a lot more than five bucks to fix his truck, by the way. A after yesterday, bit, yeah, I think. Yeah. Even though the deductible. Here's Miami. Hello. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Listen, you ever notice getting back to uh, old CW? Every time Rimmer mentions him, he's always the big man with the buck. Yeah. It's a blast! A blast! A standing ovation! The big man on the line. Yeah. Chris Wells. Mm hmm. That, that's part of the whole ass sucking ambiance of what's going on over there. And I've, I've just, these last couple of days, in case you haven't noticed, I've lost it. I just, I just can't deal with it anymore. I just don't like ass sucking. You know what? I can't stand that. Tell it like it is and stop uh, shilling already. The whole, the whole broadcast crew, man, with the Panthers, all they do is ass suck. You're not going tonight, right? No, I'm not. Okay. Not going to be here. What I'm giving my think, tickets uh, away. You think we're going to show up tonight? I have no idea. I hope so. I hope so. It, w- it would be embarrassing to, to lose to a mediocre team in five games to just roll over and play dead. I know. And in all Got to at least uh, give it a good shot. All my family from up north is going to be, they're ringing my phone as it is at 10 and 11 at night. During yeah. The last game. I mean, these performances, even the game we won at first game, there, there was about nine minutes in which they scored all three goals. Other than that, you take that out of there, and it was nothing. These have not been playoff caliber games. You know, I can't stand the Canadians, but I'm glad they won a game last night at home just for the hell of it, give New Jersey a tougher time. But, I mean, exactly. the, the atmosphere in most of these other series has been so electric, so amazing. Kind I mean, flat. you watch the passing and back and forth and up and down. The Dallas and uh, uh, Edmonton series, for example, phenomenal. And you look at our game so far, and it's been uh, coma-inducing. Coma, right. coma hey, especially hey, our performance, coma. Hey, listen, you remember your uh, program director's uh, Mike Anthony? Yeah. How about him? He makes him look like a brain. Or David Hosley? Oh, my God. He makes David Hosley look like a pseudo-intellectual, which he looked like anyway. Listen, what's the correlation between the Panther office and the Paxson company? You notice that... Oh, that's a real shot. That's a real... Don't compare well, the... Hey, you know, to go don't compare the, the, pa- the, Pax- the Panther people with the Paxson people. The Paxson people are the Antichrist family. Well, you know, uh, they... The Panthers don't want to listen to any. They don't want to hear. You know, they think everything's yeah. great. Yeah, but at least they bring us a little bit of enjoyment anyway. Well, at least, at least which is more than I can new, say uh, for these people. At least with all these new IDs here, all these, uh, you have some material to take over with your jingles, uh, QAM. That's right. You got some good jingles. So, have, in closing, I, yes? I have a, I have a, a new um, rejoin for you. Yes. Thanks for listening to WIOD. Now back to the Neil Rogers show. All right. See ya. That was beautiful. We have an open line in day. It's 622-WYOD. He left out. What he should have said is now back to the <laughs> Neil Rogers show. Okay, let's go to... And two on the out-of-town lines and the audio net lines. So anyway, number one, uh, number one, jock school in America, UCLA, followed closely by Notre Dame, as in... Father O'Toole. Rectum. Number three, Stanford. Number four, Toch- Texas. Number five, Florida. The Gators, baby. The Gators, number five, jock school, party school, 
Unbelievable. I know we got some people listening up there in Gainesville. You're not fooling me for a second, okay? Can beat that gator meat. And closely followed by number six, Michigan. I like it. Yeah. Michigan, the Wolverines, with 16 intramural sports, 19 famous alumni, including Gerald Ford. I wonder, does it say Mandich on here in the alumni? Does it have the whole, doesn't have the whole list? Gerald Ford, one of the dumbest men in history. Tom Harmon, father of, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Mark, Mark Harmon. And uh, Chris Weber. How do you like that? I mentioned Mark Harmon, and then we get to Michigan and come to find out. That's right, old Tommy Harmon. 400 years ago, he was great. Number seven, North Carolina. After big basketball wins, celebrations rage on Franklin Street. They got a little bonfire going there. They're jumping around. They look pretty good, by the way, those uh, young guys at North Carolina. Let's go up there and do a remote. Penn State. Oh, I can't stand, I can't stand Penn State. Turn the page. Those uniforms are so boring. If you think Joe Paterno is boring, the uniforms are even worse. There's just something about that whole school, man. Penn State. Can't stand Penn State. Number seven. Uh, here's number nine. The real Antichrist people. Nebraska. Tom Osborne. If he ain't one of the anti-Christians... Number 10, this I don't understand. Number 10, Princeton? Princeton. And what do they show here? They show, they show the rowers. What do they call the uh, guy that sits in the front? The coxman? The uh, coxswain? Uh, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Princeton, of course, that's one of those preppy sports. You know, that's what they're big into is all that preppy stuff. Number 11, USC. Number 12, Arizona. Number 13, Ohio State. Number 14, Virginia. Number 15, Wisconsin. Number 16, Tennessee. Number 17, Iowa. Number 18, California. 19, Indiana. 20, Alabama. Alabama slipped a lot. Then they got, let's see, 20, uh, 21 is Georgia. 22, Michigan State. Oh! Way down the list, and we're proud of that, okay? We don't give a crap about winning. We just give a crap about getting drunk and getting laid. And going out on grasses and losing our glasses and puking all over the place. Number 23, Brigham Young. Then Syracuse, Duke, Minnesota, Washington, Arizona State, Kentucky, Oregon, Kansas, North Carolina State, LSU, Harvard, number 34, Texas A&M, Army, Utah, Clemson, Colorado, Northwestern, Villanova, Auburn, FSU is number 43. <laughs> FSU way down there, 43. Oh, that's because Deion Sanders went there. And Dave Cowens, that faggot. Number 44, South Carolina. Number 45, the Hurricanes, Miami. Way down there. Alumni Rick Berry, Roy Firestone, Michael Irvin, and Jim Kelly. What do about Michael Irvin and Roy Firestone have in common? They're both Jewish. Followed by Connecticut, Boston College, Air Force, Georgia Tech, and rounding out West Virginia. All right, there you go, the top 50. All right. Wow. Jock schools. You might not learn much there, but they're great jock schools and party schools. Go have a good time and drink a lot of Meisterbrow. I wonder if Meisterbrow's still around. We sure drank lots of Meister Brow in, uh, in Michigan State. Lots by in those big half-gallon bottles. The big, gigantic, oh, man. That was good stuff. Good swill. And then there was always Stroh's, which we used to call Tiger. <laughs> Here's Margate. Hello. Hey, enough of the sucking already. But, uh, what does that mean? <laughs> what the hell does that mean? <laughs> no, I love it. If you call them, enough for the sucking. About the sucking up. <laughs> so that was still in my... Enough uh, for the sucking. Another... <laughs> What are you talking about? What language would you be speaking? Be speaking? Yeah. No, the, a few weeks ago, you played a, a bit where a fellow was trying to get into the John on an airplane. I did? Yeah. Maybe George recalls it, and he bumped into the pilot, and it was hilarious, I thought. I think you're dreaming. I think you're hallucinating. I we have that, that one doo-dooing on the plane. I got that. Maybe that was it. No, that's, that's uh, well, we'll give it a shot. Because he was on the way and he couldn't get the laboratory on the plane and he couldn't quite get in and it was noisy and yeah, I thought it was hilarious. Okay, we'll uh, drop one for you. What do I know? Okay, right, not, obviously not much. We'll see. Okay, you don't know much. Maybe this is it. I doubt it. When you got on the airplane, the drink stopped. Couple of vodkas, then some tonic and tangeray. Hey, give me another one. You started acting silly, like Happy Jack the Clown. <laughs> you pulled your zipper, and your pants came a tumbling down. Got started with a fart, then you do do in front of a song. Just oh. run, don't you know that? If the 
1044 WYOD. So George was telling me during the uh, while we're playing that about all the uh, unsupervised kids yesterday and about how the parents were nowhere near their little kids and all these girls were running around running havoc all over the building, just creating all kinds of nightmares and destroying things, everything in their wake. Yes? Just ask Lino. He'll tell you. Just ask Jay Lino. Property damage. Property damage. How much? Not estimated yet. Well, give me a ballpark. 500000 Roughly. Roughly five bills. Roughly $500 to Jay Lino's truck here. One of our fine engineers, one of the only ones we have left, by the his way. His deductible's 500. And his deductible's 500, so how do you like that? It works out great. I mean, not. Which means he ain't going to get a penny of insurance money. He's going to have to pay the 500 out of his pocket because some of these little girls yesterday were knocking stuff over and didn't give a crap, and their parents weren't paying any attention. And this is what goes on in America today. Totally unsupervised little brats running around. This is all you people making babies out there. Your parents like I'm a parent, okay? The last thing I would want to be is a parent. I got enough trouble with dogs. And by the way, speaking of dogs, see 48 hours last night? Yes, I did. In between all the hockey, uh, 48 hours last night had one of the most amazing shows... And thank God that, uh, what was the old dog's name with that woman? That was such a sad story. It was. But you knew it would have a happy ending because uh, they weren't going to show you one where the dog oh, Not on that show. Oh, they kill people all the Do time they? on that show. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, thank God for the old bag there. And they even picked up the, uh, they picked up the tab for the two grand. And she walked out of there with her old, old dog, that good old uh, whatever the hell her name was. That was quite a show. And then, of course, the, uh, the poor pigeon. <laughs> these people, these the people pigeon. had a pigeon for a pet. Major and the pigeon surgery. was, they thought it was a male, first of all. And the pigeon had an egg stuck in its uh, rectum or somewhere in there. And yeah. uh, the pigeon didn't make it. The doggy psychologist was my favorite, though. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> every, the separation every, anxiety every day syndrome. they would come home and the house would be just torn to shreds. The bed, the mattress, everything in the house. Just <laughs> and they were surprised. The best part of it is they were surprised. Oh, not again. Yeah, surprise. And the best part of it is they had two of these wild dogs in there just tearing a whole damn a house apart. And they were shocked. So they had to go to the doggy shrink, the doggy doctor. And they put them on doggy downers. And they put them on doggy downers. And guess what? Evidently it worked, okay? which is what most of those little girls needed here yesterday, was doggy downers. 1047 at WIOD. Who needs bull? University Dodge knows that life is full of bull. That's why you don't want or need any more, and that's why they offer you their no bull dealer with no bull prices. University Dodge is a family-owned and operated dealer. They've been around for 10 years, so you can count on them to provide you the best service and the best deals. No bull dealer with no bull prices means they won't steer you wrong. You'll find it easy to deal with the folks at University Dodge. They know you don't want high pressure. They know you don't want gimmicks, and they don't give you any of that BS because they want you to come back again and again. So head west to University Dodge on University Drive between Griffin and Sterling and Davie. Check out their beautiful new building with hundreds of new 97 Dodges to choose from, like the 1500 Club Cab Pickup, the great-looking Dodge Neon, the very, very expensive but well-worth-the-money Dodge Viper, so I'm told. At University Dodge, it's the noble dealer with noble prices, so head west for the best prices, best service at University Dodge, home of a better way. 610 WIOD. The topic today, why don't we get phone calls? Wait right there. Don't move. Hold that thought. 610 W-I-O-D. It's Friday, you bastards. Okay. Like a sedan, or won't you hop inside my company car? I got the pictures and tax and eat out of my hand. I'm gonna make you a radio star. I'm Walter Saber, baby. I can do anything I wanna do. I'm your consultant woman, and I'm gonna be consulting you. I'm giving that phone on a crap show and a formula. I've got the for ya. I've got the power to mold and control. your own show at a station down in Hollywood. And I don't care if your ratings are low, just as long as you can stroke me good. I'm Walter Sabre, baby, and you'll do anything I want you to. All right. I'm your consultant woman, spread your legs when I desire you. 
I'm gonna bone ya. Bone and bone ya. Cause I'm dumb slob. Can't get a real job. That's why I'm a consultant. Cause I'm just an asshole. 10.54, W-I-O-D, happy Friday. Tonight's final score, Panthers 110, Rangers nothing, okay? Does that make them happy over there or what? They'll wake up, won't they? We have an open line of date, 622 WIOD. We have one in Broward, 767. We have one on the mobile one, Purple Line, Pound IOD. We have two in Palm Beach in the out-of-town audio net lines at one 474 9463 I'm, I'm uh, speechless. I really am. I heard one of those last night. Must have been just before Brooke came on, right after the end of Rick and Suds. I heard one of those, and I said... Is this a joke? Is Brooke playing like one of our... Hardly a talk station. We talk about important oh, things, God. don't we? 610 WIOD, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. 610 WIOD, Miami, On a good Fort night. Lauderdale. And the music the there, that, that music from like the 50s, from the 40s. We got Glenn Miller music going in the back. Oh, my God. God, it's it's just, it's unspeakable. It's unmentionable. Is this really what these people envision for this joint? Here's North Bay Village. Hello. Good morning. Buenos dias. Leo, I, this is my first time calling you. You're yes. incredible. Yes, I am. Congratulations on your contract. Thank you so much. You are the man. Uh, when do I get out of here already? <laughs> oh, God, please, say a prayer for me. I got a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Yes. The first one is, if the Panthers win tonight, yes. do they play tomorrow? No, they play Sunday at uh, 2 p.m. in New York. So I can go to the ball game next time. Okay, that's good. The All next right. question. What do you think about professional wrestling? I don't. You don't like it? That hurts me. Why is that? Well, because I'm involved in it, and I like it, and I... It's I'm, garbage. Okay. It's swill. It's swill. It's, it's very, fun it's, for the feeble-minded. Is it fun? Oh, I said fun for the feeble-minded, okay. yeah. Well, yeah I, I enjoy it. I'm pretty stupid. I okay. Guess. Have a nice Well, day. there's a lot of stupid people out there. <laughs> Tea salute, you know. You know, I'll tell you... More power I've, to you. I've been involved with it a long time, and... A lot of people really like it. A, little, a lot of people really believe it. That's the worst yeah, part. Yeah, that's scary, isn't it? That is scary. That is scary. Well, thanks for your honesty anyway. Uh, trust me. Okay. Take care. I won't. We have an open line in date, 622 WYOD. We have a pair in Broward. Of course, we know that all those professional wrestlers are fags anyway, but that's beside the point. Two open lines in Broward, 767-9463, 767-WIOD. Don't start with that macho man stuff with me, Mr. Mr. Not macho. Mr. Here's uh, Davey. Hello. Let's go, Rangers. Let's go, right? Oh, there he is again. You got the thing on my... Let's go, man. He got a nose pin over his penis. Nice going, pal. Wow. Open line of date, 622. All of Broward, 7679463. It's not going to be one of those musical days, is it, on a Friday? Oh, my God. On an all-request Friday, we're going to be playing music. I think Walt Sabo's got a point. I think those rejoins are... Uh, I think that's where it's at. Let's play Glenn Miller music for four hours, huh? That'll get him in the mood. Let's play In the Mood by Glenn Miller. We're going back. You know, we have to have uh, sometimes new things or old things. Sometimes the stuff from way in the past, like knickers and two-piece men's bathing suits, stuff like that. That wasn't so bad in its time, just like the Spanish Inquisition. What the hell was wrong with that? They made him an offer they couldn't refuse. I think we're having an Inquisition in this joint, if you ask me. I mean, this is, it's just, there are no words to describe it. It's, uh... 610 WIOD. Feel our pain. <laughs> oh, we're, we're feeling it all right. We're feeling it, yeah. <laughs> and you know something, the sound of the saw there, it's like, it's like part of the demolition of the entire joint, man. You can hear it. They're sawing it, they're cutting it, they're chopping it, they're, uh, they're killing it. Nice going, guys. Thank you. 1057 at WIOD. Come with me now to visit the wonderful Isle of Dreams. 610 WIOD, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. And now and then. The Palm Beaches. A sort of service of Daxon Communications, an American stock exchange company. W-I-O-D, deliciously different marijuana, deliciously different marijuana. Shannon, I Faulkner. We all know how Shannon Faulkner's courageous three-hour, half-a-day attempt to enter the Citadel ended at Hell Week. It hurts to quit. <laughs> oh, and I, and I don't think I look good in the shorts either. But Shannon's story started two and a half years before Hell Week. And now, A.B. Slees presents You Can Go to Hell, I Quit, the Shannon Faulkner story. Up and out of Shannon, time to work out. Let's go, let's Everyone go, in the Faulkner go, household go. knew Shannon would have to be in tip-top shape to complete the rigorous training at the Citadel. Dad, I can't eat anymore. You better eat Cadet 13.
12 more Twinkies where that one came from. Now, eat, munch, Learn chew, how her go. rigorous training changed everything. Uh, Shannon, we're going to have to break up. The Citadel things made you too much woman for me. Uh, if you ain't going to finish your prize, can I have a... You can go to hell, I quit. The Shannon Faulkner Story. It's the movie that proves you don't have to succeed in life. You just have to sell your miserable life story to the networks. Sunday night on ABC's. Okay, 1104 WIOD. Boy, those those rejoins and those IDs. That last one there, that ID, the top of the yard that you just played, that was uh, the kiss of death. That was the killer. That was the last, the last uh, nail in the coffin. Have you still got that? Or do they come up like at random? They just, they rotate? No one would confuse this with a talk station. Oh, no, 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 no. 610 WIOD. Miami, Fort Lauderdale. When the wind's with us, the Palm Beaches. 610 WIOD. Is this a joke? This has got to be a joke, isn't it? This has just got to be to try to provoke some of us and give us some more material because, uh, you know, things are kind of boring these days. Huh? It's got to be a joke. It can't be serious, can it? Can it? Can it be serious? No. Here's Fort Lauderdale on a mobile. Hello. Hello there, Neil. Buenos dias. How are you today? Great. Great. You sound great. Yes, I, I do. A, I have a pig report on the Turnpike northbound <laughs> at Hollywood. Yes, sir. They're, they are at their end of the month clearance, and they have about uh, a dozen police out there. All right. Uh, some of our finest, and they don't look like they passed any donut shops in the recent Yesterday month. Yesterday it was Plantation. Today it's Hollywood. They're like that's all over the damn place, just to make sure they don't miss us. That's it. That's it. Well, that's all I have for you. Thanks for the good I, news. I'm always enjoying uh, listening to you, so keep up the good work. Okay, thanks. Take it easy. See ya. We have an open line on the mobile one, Purple Line, the uh, spy report for all that uh, the pig stuff going on out there, and whatever else. Pound IOD, mobile one pays for it, no matter what kind of a uh, thing you got. M -m -m mobile. I am just, uh, I, I, exactly right, speechless, stage struck, spellbound. Two open lines on the Palm Beach and out of town and audio net lines. One triple eight four seven four nine four six three. Here's Kendall. Hello. Hey Neil, how you doing? Okay, sir. This whole thing reminds me of uh, the Phil Henry bit when he was going to bring back the old uh, right. joints. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm having deja vu. Only that was a joke, and I don't think this one is. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Uh, have you heard your new promo they played during the Ron and Ron show? Which says. Uh, do you listen to Neil Rogers? Oh, then yes. no, that's that's old. That's uh, oh, that's old? yeah, weak. <laughs> yeah, can I fit their show though? Yeah, weak. All right. Okay. And one request. Yes, sir. It felt like a what? Okay. Oh my God, that's under uh, what? What is that under anyway? Oh, it's under that. <laughs> it just. Feel like a prick. Two open lines in date, 6229463, one on a mobile, one purple line, pound IOD, the out of town in Palm Beach. Forget it, they ain't speaking to us today. They got no use for us, and I can't blame them because we don't reach up there anyway, according to that rejoin we just heard. Hey, Adam, how do you like those new rejoins? He says, Great, great. He's, He's psyched, still got to man. Work here. He's staying here, remember? Oh, that's right. He's got to uh, get a paycheck. That's right. Somebody said yesterday. Okay, let's go to uh, Key Largo. Oh, sorry, take that back. Here's Key Largo. Hello. Yeah, Neil. Yes, sir. I'm glad you're getting out of there with what they're doing to that place. Oh, my God. It's it's unbelievable. And they, this is serious. This is their idea. This is so perfectly Paxton Man that it's unbelievable. Well, obviously... It reminds me of WSUN all over again, which was Cox. Listeners. They won by about 300 points. How about that? And nobody still probably likes them anyway. Nobody cares, but they won by about 400 points. Exactly. And I'd just like to have a request. Yes, sir. Uh, Donald Duck. Okay. All right, thanks. You'll be gotten it. Okay, we have an open line in Dade, 6229463, 622WIOD. We have one on the mobile one, Purple Line, at Pound IOD. Everybody, everybody in everybody. We didn't have no ducks on that show last night, did we? No ducks. They had uh, pigeons. They had uh, a couple of other birds, parakeet or whatever the hell that one was. Oh, it was a cockatiel. I can't say that. And uh, the one with the wounded wing, that one turned out okay. But the th oh, and then a woman with a snapping turtle. Can you believe that? Pregnant. With a pregnant snapping turtle, it had like eight million eggs inside of it, and she's like holding the thing up and like getting all cozy. Oh, Jesus! Like, oh, here, sweetheart. Come on, come. I mean, a dog, of course, it goes without saying. Dogs are sensational. Cats, I mean, uh, not for me, but I, I can almost understand. Well, I really can't, but I can almost understand that. But a snapping turtle. 
And then, of course, they had the people with the weasel. Oh, I'm sorry, with the ferrets on there. And I was thinking about Rick Riley. Oh, my God. I feel so good. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh slow down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Play with my balls. Play with my balls. Oh, I feel so good. Yeah, just roll them around. Do the circle. Oh, my God. I love it with you. Uh-oh, slow down. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't move. I'll go get you a towel. W-I-O-D. It must be doobie time, you hear that? They all tie in with that same theme. Stale. Two open lines in date. And see, they don't know if that's one of the old ones or one of the new ones. They really can't figure it out at this point. We've got them all uh, exactly turning it off. 622 WIOD. We've got a pair of open lines in date. Palm Beach, out of town. It would be really exciting to get a call on there today because maybe the wind is blowing in the right direction. one 888 but we sure doubt it. Here's Sunrise. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, our last Panther game. Well, hopefully not our last Panther game, but they just better... Uh, I think the defense is what's going to... Make or break us. Yeah. They better, I think McLean better tattoo on their ass, take the man. Yeah. In front of the net. If I see Tardy yelling at the TV, you know, they have a New York guy standing in front of the net and the Panther guy is standing in front of him. They're not jousting or anything, just standing there waiting. And then for kind the of pass. Wayne Gretzky is standing off at the rim of the circle just all by himself and nobody's paying too much attention. Yeah. They're watching, yeah. They're too, too interested concentrating on the pass coming in front of the net. Uh huh. And not taking the man right. and, and the odd man who's sneaking around. You couldn't be talking about Eddie, Eddie, could you? I could be. I could be. Well, hey, uh, what are you so happy about? You getting the hell out this weekend? Meaning what? You getting out of town. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if you're going, if you're going, I'm getting out of here. That's what I'm happy about. Of course, I don't know when, but at least uh, it's like a guy on you know death row who gets a reprieve. Sooner or later, you're going to get out. The door's going to open. All right. Hey, if Sooner. you're going to uh, last way, just put a couple hundred down on the avalanche. Yeah. If you're going to Tron, I'll lay off the lower sea court ice cream. Yeah. And uh, can I have a request? Yeah. Uh, the Casey Kasem dedication. Okay. Thank you. See ya. Bye now. Open line of date, 6229463, 622WIOD, one in Broward, 7679463, 767WIOD. Now, we're up to our long distance dedication. And this one is about kids and pets and a situation that we can all understand, whether we have kids or pets or neither. It's from a man in Cincinnati, Ohio, and here's what he writes. Dear Casey, this may seem to be a strange dedication request, but I'm quite sincere, and it'll mean a lot if you play it. Recently, there was a death in our family. He was a little dog named Snuggles, but he was most certainly a part of... Let's come start again. From coming out of the record. Play the record, okay? Please. See, when you come out of those up-tempo damn numbers, man, it's impossible to make those transitions. And then you got to go into somebody dying. You know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for, but damn it, if we can't come out of a slow record, I don't understand it. Is Don on the phone? Okay, I want a damn concerted effort to come out of a record that isn't a f***ing up-tempo record every time I do a damn death dedication. Now, make it, and I also want to know what happened to the pictures I was supposed to see this week. This is a god last damn time. I want somebody to use his f***ing brain to not come out of a damn record that is, uh, that, that's up-tempo, and I got to talk about a f***ing dog dying. Boy, this is f***ing ponderous, man. Ponderous, f***ing ponderous. Anybody out there got a pigeon with something stuck in its... Rectum. You'll be on 48 hours in no time. Dan Rather was having a good time with that whole thing, wasn't he? 11.13 at WIOD. Charles Alfieri would like to have a good time making you look like a mensch. That's right. He's been doing it for over 25 years, including some guys who got the big bucks. Movie stars, movie uh, hotshots out there in uh, L.A. And that's right. Guys who can afford to spend any amount of money under the sun, they go to Charles Alfieri. And you can do the same. You can spend a lot more someplace else. But for just 800 bucks, Charles Alfieri will give you the best-looking natural hair system anywhere in the universe. Charles makes your hair look like it's grown right out of the scalp, especially at the hairline. And if you go see him, he'll show you an example, and you can 
see for yourself just how much better and younger and more human you can look. Charles also knows the secret of a natural-looking system is regular servicing. That's why service visits at the Alfieri Studios are affordably priced at only 25 bucks, not 60 bucks like they soak you at most other places. And while you wait, Charles Alfieri can add hair to your present system at only 25 bucks an hour. Adjust color for only 10 bucks. Charles can even revive the wave and curl to make your hair look natural again, even if you bought that piece someplace else. So pick up the phone and call today. Forget about those holes in the head. Forget about those mousy-looking wigs. The Charles Alfieri system is the best going at any price. Call right now. Make an appointment to go in and check it out for yourself. In Broward, call 928-1755. 928-1755. Toll free from outside of Broward. From anywhere, call 1-800-321-2413. one 800 321 Charles Alfieri at 4390 North Federal Highway, right between Oakland and Commercial in Fort Lauderdale. More cheese, please. 610 W-I-O-D. That was the rejoin there. I know. I know. 1117 at WIOD. We have an open line in day at 622. I am serious. I can't believe that they're, they are serious. I really can't believe that. I know they're inept. I know they're clueless. I know they have no concept of how to put together a station that sounds like a real major market radio station. But the, these, this, this swill, this dreck, this mung, this dull, boring, bland, 1940-ish, Glenn Millerish sounding crap. Is this a joke? Is this a put on? Is this just before the big fire sale goes? Uh, is that it? Man, oh, man, oh, man. What are the Clear Channel people going to think about this? Oh, is their idea? Here's a lady mobile in Deerfield. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, ma'am. I called the other day out in Deerfield. Yes. There still is a problem with the reception. It's really bad. Yeah, well, like I said, move. We have an open line in Broward. She's going to call me every couple of days and tell me she can't hear it in Deerfield. I don't care, okay? Don't bother us. Leave us alone. We don't really care. We're running rejoins that say you can't hear us in Palm Beach, and Deerfield's pretty close to Palm Beach, close enough. So move. Move to like a real place, like uh, Coral Springs. Hello. <laughs> How do you like her? Every couple of days she's got to give me a report. She still can't hear it. You're unbelievable. She's unbelievable. <laughs> Crazy bitch. Those are some hard-hitting jingles and rejoins. Okay, is, it reminds it just, me of the is it just me, or can you believe this? Oh, God. It reminds me of the old uh, ABC and KHJ and the Drake-type jingles, huh? Uh, yeah, but from 100... Yeah, but at least those were dynamic. Absolutely. Hard-hitting. These are like... my God, you said These are about as hard-hitting as a stale matzo ball. Neil, I don't know if I'm going to make it till September. I don't really know. That makes two of us. Oh, God, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Then they have these, the, the thing, I don't, do you remember the movie years ago with Jack Lemmon called Good Neighbor Sam? No. Okay, it was a movie, he was an advertising agent, and he somehow got involved in some deal, and his pictures were all over town on billboards, and he had to go around and paint them over and stuff. Yeah. That's what we're going to have to do to your billboards around town. Can you believe that those are still up? <laughs> those are still up. They're all over, too. I've seen about five or six of them. And our, and our new PD, Harry Penis, he keeps insisting that they're coming down. And Jay Hoker up there at the Paxson Bill, he thinks, uh, he, he insists that they're going to stay up. And uh, they, th this company hasn't got any idea who's on first and uh, who's got their hand in their ass. So we, we should go around. It's unbelievable. Some, we should throw some signs on them that say, soon to be on QAM. Something, anything. <laughs> Listen here. I but I sure appreciate all the promotion, though, guys. Oh, they, well, it's advertising you can't pay for. Right. Uh, Don <clears> Cox. <throat> What is it? Don Cox, J. Yeah. Some sidekick. I was surfing in that, and I saw a deal where uh, there was a disc jockey in Miami years ago named Don Cox. Is they one and the same? That's the guy. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? Jeez. That's the same go guy. Oh, why don't they just hire him and put him there, uh, replacing you? Sounds good to me. Oh. I love it. Well, bear through the day and enjoy your weekend. Okay. Take care. See ya. Open line at Broward, 767-9463, 767-WIOD. Well, Pete Bolger told me, I can't tell you who it is, but he already told me who's going to be on, uh, you know, on the station. Here's uh, Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? Great. You sound great. A um, couple things here. How about that ass whooping uh, Colorado put out last night? Seven to nothing. How do you like that? Wow, Seven that to zip. They came back and said, hey, we're just uh, toying with you guys. Yeah, we're we'll, just diddling around. We'll let it string out a bit. Seven to nothing. Phew. Well, uh, we guys got to get some serious defense on tonight. Hope we win. Yeah. Give us a chance. I was wondering if you could play The Simpsons. The Simpsons? Yeah. I wonder if that's in. That's probably not in here, is it, George? Yeah, it, is. it is? It might be under OJ, though. Are you sure? I'm sure. No, I don't, I don't, I'm asking uh, Hotshot in there. <laughs> OJ, The Simpsons stand-up? That's not it. 
I'll find it for you, pal. If it's the All last, right. if it's the yeah, last, have a good weekend there, and sir. you too. See ya. See, you're confusing me. It's not in here. Is it? Is it? <laughs> it ought to be. There's a couple of Simpsons uh, OJ things. Yeah. It's on the but Rick and Suds menu. It is. That's it. Can you get someone over here now to 325 Gretna Green? He's back. Please. You little. What is he doing? Is he threatening you? That one's nuts. Are you mad, woman? Or is he just harassing you? You're going to hear him in a minute. He's about to come in again. No! You just stay on the line so we can know what's going on until the police get there, okay? Oh, dear God, no! Just on the cow, Dad. In case he comes in, I need to hear what's going on, all right? Is he yelling? Yes. Okay. Is he, has he been drinking? It's not whether you win or lose. It's how drunk you get. See, sooner or later we find it for you. We have to dig. We have to search. We have to uh, put it in a lurch, put it somewhere. But sooner or later we find it for you. That was great. Nice going, George. Anyway, it's under the. That's why I couldn't find it. Why would anybody put something under the? Here's Bayside. Hello. Hey, how are you, Neil? Great. Good, good Happy for you. Friday to you, sir. Hey, Merry Kwanzaa to you. All right. All right. Hey, congratulations on getting out of that stupid Paxson. Uh, he should take his head out of his ass and take in some oxygen, buddy, because you are the man. Rectum. Yeah. Yes, sir. Exactly, Amen. as I say. Let me tell you something. I'm a ranger at heart because I was born in New York, but Panther fan. Yeah. When are they going to get off their butts, but, stay but, on but, some but, ice, but. and play some hockey? We'll see. We'll see. Hey, listen, this is it. something about these Ticketmaster people. Yes. Sell out. Two words. Sell out. I try to get a hold of them. Oh, sir, we can call you as soon as we get these tickets on sale. Well, I've been waiting, twiddling my thumbs for 24 hours, haven't heard a damn thing. you got about the same chance that Ed McMahon and Dick Clark are going to call you on the phone and tell you you just won $10 million yeah, as Ticketmaster is going to call you and say we got you a ticket. That's what I thought. Hey, exactly. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm a Roger Rody baby. Wherever you go, I be packing up and going, baby. All right. Hey, Paisan signing out here. See ya. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. We have an open line in Dade, 622 wiod Come on, let's get whooped up to a frenzy here. Come on. Here we go. Let's do it. One time for old time's sake. We love you, Panthers. Oh, yes, we do. But we're not whining. We don't whine over here, okay? We do go on to pregame show and make all kinds of stories and songs and dances. Which, by the way, was very interesting because somebody, I don't want to mention his name, but somebody was trying to get Brian Murray to say on that pregame abortion that night, Wednesday night, about how, well, you know, once the goalie's out of the crease, he's fair game. Which uh, Richter was like just in front of the crease. He wasn't like out in the corner or behind the net. He was just barely in front of the uh, crease. And Brian Murray said, no, that's not true. He's never fair game. In fact, Brian Murray is one of the big proponents of this stupid blue uh, bigger crease rule and the in the crease thing, which is ruining the game. And he said, no, that's uh, the goalie is not fair game, or we're trying to protect him, and yada, yada, yada. They stunk. So uh, there you go. Kind of blew up in somebody's puss. Anyway, here's uh, Miami. Hello. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Great. All right. Listen, I just wanted to say I think Paxson and uh, the Panther management share are one and the same. Could be. Could, you know, I think uh, they're really idiots for that trade back there. If I had to point a definitive finger at something, it's definitely that trade. That was certainly a turning point. Oh, turning point. Listen, you know, the team <laughs> had a great amount of chemistry. Yeah. And it was destroyed. Yeah. And I think... Packers but you'll never convince thing. them of that. You'll never convince them of that. Well, hey... I they think... love Chris Wells, man. They got blow-up dolls of Chris Wells in their homes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I think Paxson's got the same thing, too, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's got a blow-up doll of Walter Sabo, I think. <laughs> God. I'm serious. Walter Sabo could be one of the dumbest men I've ever met in my life. He has no more... He wouldn't, he wouldn't even know how to turn on a radio, much less how to program one. Well, that explains the trade. Yeah. You're right. Well, hey, listen, Neil, I just wanted to pass that on. Okay. Hope you have a good weekend and, and a great holiday. Back to you. All right. See you. Okay. Bye-bye. Two open lines in date, 6229463, on a great Friday, on an earth-shaking Friday. We're solving the problems of the medical profession today. We're going to solve the problems of the legal profession. We're going to solve the problems of the sports uh, thing. We're going to solve the problems of all of your religious uh, assholes. We're going to solve all the problems of the world by 2 o'clock. And if you don't believe that, you stay tuned. Or else, how do you like that? The opinions expressed on WIOD <laughs> are those of Neil Rogers. You understand what I'm saying? No, I don't. Is it, can I ask you a question? No. Can I ask you a question? No. There are other opinions, but not for long. 610. WIOD. What is it?
What does that mean? Isn't that the opposite of what they should be trying to say? There are other opinions, but not for long. Like soon, only Neil's opinions will be on here. That's what that's saying. What, so, is, what does that mean? Exactly. I don't get what you just said either. What that the 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 gist of that rejoin the is gist that there of that are other is... there are other opinions besides Neil's, but yeah. not for long. Huh? It's backwards. Yeah. So in other words, Neil's opinions won't be here much longer. We're no, have somebody... that's not what they're saying. Yeah. They're saying there are other opinions besides Neil's. Oh, but, but you don't understand. Long. We got all those billboards up. Neil is here. Neil is still here, and we're going to milk it. Okay. And, uh, you know, right. that's the Jay Hoker okay. philosophy. Yeah. And you know what Alan Mason said? It's going to get really ugly. Yeah, these people all have a different story. They all got a big mouth. They all talk a lot. They all peddle out a lot of stuff to the media, most of which is untrue, by the way. And then even the big man himself, the hotshot, Mr. I Can Destroy Anything I Touch, Mr. Buddy Bud, he goes on there and says, well, uh, the real question is, uh, what obligations? Uh, yeah, right. Just keep making it up as you go along. You know, just dazzle them with bullcrap, like in all those meetings. You know, just dazzle us with importance and about those god dang Italians and that big yacht they're building for you and they can't do anything right. I'm really impressed, you know what? I mean, I have never been so impressed, uh, depressed in my life. Hey, how's the planet doing, by the way? They had one hell of a book, didn't they? Man, you think we had a pretty marginal book. Woo-wee! In fact, let me take a look. Let me take a look and see how for what formerly is she. One moment, please. Just bear with me, okay? Just humor me for one moment. 6 to 10 a.m. Of course, they've had 45 changes on there. That was Linda Energy, of course. And it was also, who was on before her? The broad that went to Cleveland that they screwed over and lied to like uh, crazy? What the hell was her name? Liz Wilde. Liz Wilde, Linda Lovelace, whatever her name was. Let's see, WPLL, The Planet, in the morning, uh, 25 to 54. I'm looking. Oh, 1-6 to a 1-8. They're really smoking up there, huh? Of course, it was a 2-3 last summer, a 1.8 on 100,000 watt, uh, watt Class C FM. That used to be one of the prime stations in the market. Unfreaking believable well, let's see. The main, the only thing we got in women is 18 to 34. Let's be, in all fairness, take a look at women 18 to 34 and see. Maybe they're kicking ass with the women because it's supposed to be a women-oriented radio station, okay? In fact, let's see women 18 to 34, Monday through Sunday, uh, 6 a.m. to midnight, the whole week, and how the planet's doing. They're not on the first page. Oh, look at this, 4-5 to a 5-4. There you go. There's the story right there. Women 18 to 34, they're up to a 5-4. The 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Keep going. Seven are up to number eight already. They're smoking it. So that planet, they stick with that format, and you gar I guarantee it's going to be number one half for another two, three weeks. The planet, 103.5, baby. As Paxson once again just destroys everything in his path like a hurricane. 1128 at WIOD. Wonderful Isle of Dementia. 610 WIOD. You know, I might just go on strike. I might just go on strike right now. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. No, no, what I wanted was a, a folk, I mean a, a knife. But I'll take the other uh, 200 napkins because I may be crying into them any minute now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the best I can say is <laughs> like that. See, Walter Sabo told me many, many weeks ago, the last time I spoke to him in my life, I hope, uh, thank God, uh that he was going to come down here and fix the way the station sounded because the production on the station sounded so bad. Actually, I, even though some of it was getting pretty stale, I thought it sounded pretty good. I don't recall anybody ever calling and saying, you know, the uh, production, thank you again, sounds really bad and stale. But this now, this is his idea, and you know it came straight from the horse's ass. This is his idea of fixing it? Do you know what I'm saying? The level of embarrassment has reached a new low here, a new high, a new on a Richter scale. I have no penis. Some weight program, give me a break. How many drugs do I have to take? My hair is falling out and it's been hard to pee. 
Since I saw Linda Energy, you know that my heart's been going wild. Feels like I wanna die. Kill that kill and constipation, not to mention hypertension. She's out peddling drugs all day that drop some weight but ruin your brain. Her doctor husband says it's okay. A physician is his name. My pulse is up. At WRB. By the way, which uh, Wendy's did we get this from? This happens to be outstanding. Happens to be very good. I got Wendy's uh, without the bun, of course. I got Hollywood my Atkins. Boulevard. Uh, well, the one on what? Hollywood Boulevard. The one Probably that screwed the same up one our order that day? That one time, yeah. And uh, we paid for this? How come? We paid for this. We haven't got free food from them yet. Well, why not? They screwed us know, all yeah. up that one day and messed up our order. But anyway, I'll take this. This is very good. And they gave it to you this way without the bun, right? All you got to do is go to your Wendy's, say, I want an Atkins style with no bun, and they do it. I got two Wendy's singles with cheese, onion, and bacon, and it's outstanding. It's perfect on the Atkins, and it's great. Nice going, guys. And we paid for it. Here's Miami. Hello. Miami. Buenos dias. Okay, have a nice life. Here's uh, Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, what are you having for lunch today? Wendy's? I just got through telling you, yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Mm. Uh, I bought a, a new truck a couple of weeks ago. Yes, sir. From who? Guess from who? A new truck. A new truck. From Wayne, of course. You can't avoid the man anymore. Yeah. And uh, the weekend after I bought it, I took it down to uh, I Do Automotive. Mm-hmm. Tell you, they got something for everybody there. Yes, they do. They had the Hooters girls. They uh -huh. had the rodeo boys. That's right. I was in and out with a new bed liner in 15 minutes. You That's right. When you go to Ideal Man, it's the old in and out. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Listen, two things. I'd like to call Larry Epstein, a.k.a. Barry Jr., major douchebag. Oi! Yeah. Yeah, and could you play Dicker? You didn't say Barry Epstein, did you? Uh. Okay, we have an open line in Broward, 7679463. It's like the duck just came down, okay? Donald Duck. And uh, we're not loaning him to $50, okay? Loan me $50. No chance. I mean, uh... He mentioned a magic name, Barry Epstein, my close personal friend who I don't barely even know, but somehow got a hold of my uh, phone, home phone number. I will not give it to you. Exactly. Barry Epstein. Boy, that ruined my day. I have bad indigestion now. We have an open line in Broward, 7679463. 767WIOD as the Walter Sabo people are destroying, they're demolishing, they're blowing it to smithereens, they're making a laughing stock. That's always a good idea just before you sell a place so that it's worth what? They bought it for $13 million. I wouldn't be surprised if they sell it for what, two and a half? Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Roy. Do you ever think maybe Paxton's real? Roy! Roy. Could be. Walter Birds of a Sabo feather. Sucks. What is it? Walter Sabo sucks. Yeah. Jovanowski sucks. Okay, it's a suck ass world, man. We have an open line in Broward, seven six seven nine four six three seven six seven W I O D as in. And not for the sucky. Here's Fort Lauderdale again. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Neil? Great. Um, I wanted to talk about the bumpers, but I won't because they're too hideous. To the mention. bumpers. Oh my God, the bumpers. As in 610 WIOD. <laughs> Feel our pain. No! I mean, 610 but... WIOD. Oh, the, just the way he even phrases it is so boring, it, it puts you into a coma. And Maybe they're with... trying to have something to match the Karen K show. And what's with this crap, wonderful Isle of Dreams? It sucks down here. Oh, my God. Well, that's originally what the station went about like 60-some years ago when they made the station. That's what they WYOD stands for. But that went out with the Knickers. I mean, it went out with the White Bucks. But secondly... It went out with radio consultants. Is there on this planet a better Don't say planet. executives than the people hired by PAC? None. They are top-notch. They're, They're the best. The they moves. are the best. Make no mistake about it. Just keep one thing in mind, though, Neil. You're the only one making the right move. Yeah. I mean, well, I... It seems to me a lot of other people have already made... This place is cleaned out. What this place is cleaned is... out. Since the sale of the station, the entire news department is gone. And even Juan Medietto that we came over here, he's already gone and moved over to Channel 7. Jennifer Rim, she's long gone. Everybody's gone. 
Uh, Everybody's no, gone. The only people left here, other than a couple of producers, is me, Rick, and Suds. That's it. There is not one other person, only six months later, that was here when the station was sold. Does that tell you something? Not one other person on the air, except, of course, Stephen J. Gay. It means it's a damn pleasant place to work, right? That's it's the best. And that's if you can get your job done at all. I hear you every day. I mean, you know, what he has to understand is you're the only reason that we make it through the day sometimes. Yeah. I mean, life is that He bad doesn't now. care. I can go wag some other animal's ass. He doesn't care. Uh, of course. Um, He's too secondly, busy with God. My prediction, Panthers 3, Rangers 1. Okay. I, I hope, hope you're right. Afraid. From your from your mouth to God's rectum, man. And third, I yes. know that you've been taking some Italian classes, and I read a lot of mafia books. See. And there's usually an italicized word, and it's spelled M-I-N-C-H-I-A. M-I-N-C-H-I-A? Right, and it's Minkia? usually has an exclamation point after I have no idea. Minkia. Yeah, I just wonder. They say it a lot. Huh. And I was just trying it must to be like Achipikia. Well, I'll find out for you, pal. Um, can I get a shameless request? Yes. Kitty fell in the well. Okay. Thanks a lot, dude. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. He said kitty, didn't I? I thought, <laughs> I thought he said something else. I thought he was doing a Denise Pot fan on us for a second there. But nobody would do that. I woke up this morning with a feeling of despair. I looked for my pussy, but my pussy wasn't there. Well, 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 my cat fell in the well. Oh, puss, 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 poor kitty, 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 my cat fell in the well. Forty-two at W I O D. Well, well, well. That's what Malcolm McDowell said in Clockwork Orange. Remember that? Well, well, well. How come the British invented English and they still can't speak it? I've wondered that all my life. Something we'll probably be discussing on Monday. That'll be our topic: British who can't speak English. Hey, no matter what language you speak, you want to be treated right when you do business, especially when your money is involved. And that's why when your bank treats you like crap, it's time to fire your bank. We hear more damn banking stories, including Rick Riley went on a couple of days ago at great length on his bank, which begins with a B, but I won't mention which one. In fact, the uh, first letters of pop, 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 those are the first two letters of his bank. And he was getting the runaround, and they screwed him over, and he couldn't get a hold of anybody, and they didn't care. Almost everybody who deals with those big and personal banks, including me, has got horror stories to tell. And finally, you get fed up. You say, you know something? I'm sick and tired. It's my money. I care about my money. I work like a dog to make my money, and I deserve to be treated like a minch. I'm letting them hold my money and make a profit on it and squeeze it and fondle it. The least they can do is treat me well. That's why it's time to fire your bank and head to Family Bank because they're the best. They're great. They're sensational. I love them. I can't begin to tell you how much I love Matt and the bank, too. And they give you the lowest service fee in Broward. They give you all the conveniences of even the big shot banks. They got an ATM at every bank. They got uh, Honor and Presto and Cirrus. They got seven great Broward locations all over the place. So what's not to like? Family bank, where they treat you like a mensch, like a human being, a lot like a number in a computer, like the big banks do. So fire your bank. Get some cojones, baby. Grow a pier, even if you're a woman. Grow a gigantic, big, oozing pier, wherever on your body you choose. And go to your bank and say, goodbye, give me my money, please, and head to family bank. You're going to love them. Family bank, member FDIC. 610 W-I-O-D. And deep in the heart of some far-off jungle, we received word that some natives seem to be worshipping some kind of unusual god. A voice from far, far away has captivated these isolated people. If you listen closely, you may just hear... Ah! Let's just go get drunk. 
We're worldwide, baby. www.audionet.com or www.docpaxson.com. Come and worship with us with 610 WIOD. 610 WIOD. More listeners than a cell phone scanner. 610 WIOD. <laughs> You notice when the spots end and that comes on, you notice the difference in the whole ambiance and the sound? Because most of the spots, because they want to get people's attention, they've got a certain kind of dynamism to them, a certain kind of brightness, and they like, uh, you know, jumping out and screaming and want to grab you by the throat and uh, keep your attention. And then all of a sudden there's like this transition to like, like vanilla pudding. No, excuse me, vanilla pudding is too tasty, uh, like, um, like unflavored yogurt. That's it. Unflavored yogurt. As in, oh, my God. The, these people are dumber than Tom Velveeta. They really are. They are dumber than those people, those Cox people that were running WSUN, who kept saying, check back with us until this afternoon, as if, hey, you might not like this show, but maybe this afternoon we'll have a show you might like. I was a geek. Yeah, right. And by the way, now that he's left over there, uh, they're all dancing in the aisles is what I heard from, I don't want to say Cigar Dave, but Tom Velveeta was a real, as if we didn't know, useless. Useless as the day was long. Kind of a, a Yahoo, kind of like Bill Wise. Here's Miramar. Hello. Senor Rogers. See. Si. A buddy Bud Paxton was his name. Buying radio stations was his game. He's got Rick and Suds, Neil, God and Ron and Ron. And don't say goddamn when you're on. Him and Ralph Reed. They're buddy boys, wealthy religious fanatics with media toys. Oy. So hail a Mary and full of grace. Your programming preaching is a disgrace. Oh. And if you keep Mr. Walter say bo with Neil Gunn, your station will blow. Roy. Just All right. Well as a douchebag. Thanks, Neil. Okay. Excellent job. By the way, minkia in Italiano means a penis. I don't want to say, like, what you said. We can't be throwing names around on the air here like Dick. We have an open line, even though he does have a very interesting Miller Lite campaign. There's another one of those ad campaigns that nobody knows what it means and they don't care. They don't, I mean, you see that guy and you say, hey, there's Dick. I mean, if he don't look like the definitive Dick, I don't know who does. We have an open line and a mobile one, purple line, pound IOD. Boy, this is good, this lunch today. Why don't we do this more often? I, even though we have to pay for it, I'll buy. I'll spring for lunch, like, uh, once in a great while. Because the free lunches always taste better, don't they? Here, here's Hollywood. Hello. Hollywood. Hello. Yes, sir. How you doing? Great. Oh, uh, I was a long-time listener, Neil. You were? Long time. I still am. Oh, okay. Scared um, me there. I thought we lost you. No, I listen to you every day, but um, major Dolphin fan, not such, not too hot on the uh, on the Dallas Cowboys, but my partner here thinks Troy Aikman walks on water. Does he really? Oh, yeah. Until yesterday when I listened to your Aikman on his knees uh, card. Has your partner seen that spot, the TV spot that he does? Um... No, he hasn't seen that yet oh, either. Oh, my God. When he sees that, he's going to be uh, hiding in the closet. Hiding oh. in the closet? Yep. He's going to take the spot that Ellen is vacating. He's going to be in a closet when he uh, sees that spot. <laughs> no, seriously, this broad comes out, and it's like she's doing a touch football thing, and she knocks Aikman down and falls right on top of him. And then he goes back in the huddle with the players, and he says, okay, guys, same play. On his knees. Well, I mean, uh, she just got through falling on top of him. Do you follow what I'm saying? I'm with you. It's almost like Troy is making an announcement over here. <laughs> okay, guys, same play. So if you would, play that card again. Let's do it. Have a great day, pal. See ya. there, Chi. Minkia. I don't say that. Open line on a mobile one line. Pound I agree. When this quarterback gets lonely, he likes receivers that are wide. I like it. Some people say right. that number eight is gay. Boy. They say Troy loves the big brown eyes. Aikman. He goes down on his knees, Aikman. Guys, he likes to please Aikman. He loves to slap cowboys on their behind. I like it. He's got a spotless reputation. America's team is world renowned. But is Troy Gay? I've heard some people say. All right. In the huddle he goes down 
Rectum. Aikman. He goes down on his knees, Aikman. I can some balls to squeeze, Aikman. Don't clip him cause he likes it from behind. Wonderful Isle of Demons. 610 W-I-O-D. You know, it's kind of like, um, like a bunch of elementary school kids just came in and uh, with shotguns and they took over the place and they're running it now. Isn't it? Kind of like a, a bunch of little kids who want to play radio from like a grade school radio station came in here and they took over the joint and now they're like, uh, they're doing it. They be doing it. You know, KPX has great rejoins. Well, like I said, congratulations to WKPX at Piper High. They got great rejoins, and it's a great radio station, and they know a lot more about this business than Buddy Button has got some Ishbacha will ever know. And thank God, and Walter Sabo also. Funny promos. Right. No, these are pretty funny in a real sick way. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. How you doing, Neil? Great. I'm going to look forward to you being on QAM and read the numbers as we as ILD slowly goes down the pole. Yes. I'm gonna look As they forward. slide down the totem pole? I'm going to look forward to that. Yes. And the other thing was with the Panthers, they were... Uh... Here we go. Okay, that's enough. When do you think they keep saying about the fatigue with the Rangers being so old? They yeah, that was supposed to happen Wednesday. Remember the second game back-to-back? -back we were just going to show up. They just put on those cups and put on, lace up those skates. Go out there and the Rangers three times. They keep saying, well, three games in four days. I think. Yeah, three uh, games in four nights, man. They can't possibly do that. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. And Billy Franks, give me a call. Okay. All right, thanks. See ya. Yeah, it sounds like more of that whining to me, even though they deny that they're doing it. Whining. We're not whining. We're not whining. Okay, whatever you say, Dougie. Whatever you say, Brian, you're not whining. If you're not whining, then don't go on those pregame and postgame and in-between game shows and go on there and give all kinds of excuses. Let's find out the real story why these guys aren't playing like they're capable of playing and aren't even a shadow of last year. And don't give me Billy Lindsay. Billy Lindsay's a good, hard-nosed kid, but he hasn't scored a goal since before Foster Hewitt was an embryo, okay? So don't give me Billy Lindsay. We've all got more excuses than Carter's got pills. But anyway, here's uh, Boca. Hello. Hey, Neil, how's it going? Great. What's your prediction for the game tonight? I have no prediction, sir. I have no idea who's going to show up. <laughs> Will it be the real Panthers or the fake that's, Panthers? That's the point. I haven't, the real Panthers haven't showed up since uh, the Pittsburgh game. Uh, it must have killed you to see Gretzky score those three goals. Oh, my God. I Needle nose. I was screaming, screaming, because every time he's wide open, there isn't anybody he could have stopped and written a book. He could have written, a, <laughs> written War and Peace before he took the shot. I'm telling you. Uh, I know. I, I know you hate him like poison. Yes. Oh God. So. Uh, and and how come nobody will hit him? You remember in the first game when Lindsay hit him, and yeah. he, and he held his head and he wandered around. Oh gee, and he was as useless as a fart the rest of the game, and we won that game. And now all of a sudden we decide, well, we better not do it again. Oh, have what you? The, what any, is that? Uh, have you heard any rumors about Robbie and Mark Messier? Anything going on about that? About what? Robbie Niedermeyer. And Mark I don't Messier. think Mark's his type. We have an open line, and plus Robbie's got that hot, uh, hot babe. Since he's starting doing that hot babe, Robbie's been on fire, man. He's playing. Robbie Niedermeyer has turned into God. Better late than never, sweetheart. He had a rough year, man. He was brutal. He was really, I mean, there were games he was skating around in circles. It looked like he was auditioning for the U.S. skating team for the Olympics. And then he said, hey, I'm a little butchered than that. And we said, we know that, Robbie. And all of a sudden, just before the season ended and now in the playoffs, he's the one guy that's out there really doing it. Let's give him a big tip of the old medicine hat to Robbie Niedermeyer for being our one guy offensively that's out there really producing and really playing and, uh, like, doing it. And as far as everybody else, well, we'll see. How's Blinky doing? Nice beard, Blinky. 11.56 at WIOD. No one would confuse this with a talk station. Who the hell are you talking to, son? 610 WIOD. Miami, Fort Lauderdale. When the wind's with us, the Palm Beaches. 610 W-I-O-D. Ah! It's Friday, you bastard. Now, in video stores everywhere, from the people who brought you the Frugal Gourmet Cooks with Wine, it's the Frugal Gourmet Cooks with Boys. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Yes, the Frugal Gourmet Cooks Italian. Hey, little man, I've got some lovely sausage for you. <laughs> the Frugal Gourmet Cooks Chinese. Today, I'm going to make some young guy. <laughs> and, of course, the Frugal Gourmet Cooks Greek. <laughs> Ooh. 
Yes, it's your warm and fuzzy old friend, the frugal gourmet, like you've never seen him before. He may be frugal with his money, but not with his sauce. <laughs> the frugal gourmet cooks with boys, only $19.95 at a video store near you. And don't forget, coming next fall, it's the frugal gourmet cooks with malt liquor. 1204 WIOD, happy Friday to you. Here's Plantation. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing? Great. Long time listener, first time caller. All right. That Panthers game the other night, man. I got a real bad feeling down in my intestine. I'll tell you what. Do you? They're sorry. Could just be gas. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what are they going to do once they get into it? If they do get by the Rangers, oh. how far do you think they're going to go? I mean, really, they have From no about order. here they, to the wall, I would say. They, like, leave their balls in the locker room. I don't know what the deal is. Yep. Uh, could I get a shameless request? You might, just might. All right, could I uh, do the Chinese restaurant for me, please? Chinese restaurant? Come on, please, I love that the one. The Chinese restaurant that we've heard 4,000 times? Yeah, that one. Okay, pal. Thanks. Have a great life. Oh, he's not playing us again. Not a, not again. Bonjour, how can I help you? Yeah, could you follow to this restaurant for sale? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. What's your name? Patrick. Patrick? Yeah. Uh, I just thought you were supposed to talk to someone named Fu. Who? Fu. Okay, hold on just a second, okay? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yeah, sir. Yeah, who's speaking? Hello? Yeah, hello? Who's speaking? Hello? Uh, hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, you got restaurant for sale? Uh-huh. Uh, how much you want for restaurant? Well, you come over here to look at it and talk to the boss. I come over and maybe eat, eat dinner with you. Okay. Uh, does uh, that price include, uh... All the walks? Huh? Huh? Come on. Come on, that's all. You Chinese? Yeah, Chinese. Okay, you can go to the restaurant. To the restaurant? Yeah. Two hours later. Two hours later, you can go to the restaurant. Huh? Yeah. Two hours later. Two hours later. Okay, how about I get order to go and then I come over and pick it up and look at the restaurant. Okay. Okay? Okay. What's your heart? Uh, you know, you, you know, you know, you know, Okay, twelve oh seven at WYOD. We got two open lines, they're both in Broward. Seven six seven nine four six three seven six seven WYOD. Here's Kendall. Hello. Kendall. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the phone. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, how's Republic doing? 27 yesterday. It's a 27 yesterday? Not too bad. Damn, no, Not too I'm good. running at uh, 25. I was hoping that thing would go up more. Yeah, well, just hold your horses, man. Yeah. Give old Baldy a chance. Yeah. He'll get that thing up to 20, I mean, a 30. Hopefully, uh, 33. I remember before, a couple months ago, it was like a 34. It was at 40, 44 uh, for a while here, for like about two minutes. I should have sold that, huh? Right. Yeah. Me too. Me too, man. We're yeah. greedy. We're just greedy and dumb. Yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody keeps telling me to hang, hang on, you know. Hopefully uh, Wayne will do some more business. Around right, me. just hold it real tight. That's what Wayne told me. Just squeeze it real tight. Yeah, I yeah. I told him, squeeze this. Yeah, hey, I was also hoping I can get a shameless request. And what would that be, sir? Uh, Star Wars Cantina. S uh, Star Wars Cantina. You'll be gotten it. Okay, thanks a lot. See ya. Bye-bye. Oh, that's that's another one, man. We've played that like uh, 48,000 times. We have an open line in day at 6229463. There's nothing worse than when you take these things and you run them into the ground and over and over and over, and they become really ponderous and they won't even queue up in a machine. Look at that. Look at this stupid machine here. Look at this mother-scratching machine, the best equipment that money can't buy. I mean, I could have had that thing playing for this guy, like, immediately, if not sooner, and this stinking machine here is the biggest piece of dreck. God! Her name was Leia, she was a princess, with a Danish on each ear, and Darth Vader drawing near, so R2-D2, found Ben Kenobi, Obi-Wan, he'd have to put the Death Star plans into the Rebellion's hands, so Luke and Obi-Wan had to get to Alderaan, so they stopped into Mos Eisley to have a drink with Han at the Star Wars, Star Wars Cantina. Well, 
Parsec wide there with Chewbacca. He was a Wookiee. They met with Luke and Obi-Wan about the Millennium Falcon docking bay 94. Stormtroopers at the door with a flash of Ben's lightsaber. Now there's an arm on the floor. Space Port. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. You must be cautious. His name was Yoda. He was a muppet. Darth Vader was so bad. And by the way, he's Luke's dad. Luke kissed his sister. His hand got cut off. In that galaxy far, far away, Luke has had a lousy day. Boba Fett was so mean. Jabba had bad hygiene. Oh, oh, oh. Why didn't they all just relax back on Tatooine at the Star Wars, Star Wars Cantina? The weirdest creatures you've ever seen. At the Star Wars, Star Wars Cantina. Just lick them. Music and blasters and old Jedi masters at the Star Wars. Roy! will be with you. Twelve eleven at WYD. Here's a, a fax from Paula. Paula, who's a, a big Luis Miguel fan, by the way, so she can't be all bad. Paula says, "All Panther fans, go to the game tonight. Wear a white jersey, a red shirt, in the name of unity and spirit." We love you, Panthers. And go Panthers. Oh, yes, we do. That's what Paula says. The way you skate and follow through. You'll have so wear the white jersey or your red shirt tonight at the game. Let's have a sea of red, a sea of blood, a ranger blood. Gretzky's blood, Messier's blood, that pansy Luke Robitaille's blood, but don't go near it. You're where it's at, you made this season, you're a Okay, here's, uh, enough, good hug. Okay, here's Davey, hello. All right, look, this is the deal. Here's the okay. deal. This is the deal. Here's We're the deal you've been waiting crap. for. All right, just hold on one second. Give I'm holding second, it. Please, I'll, I'll explain. I'm listening. Okay. Izinga and all you jerk-offs that are for the Panthers, as far as management, this is what we're going to do. We're tired of your crap. We're not going to buy any more season passes. We're not buying any more of your damn tickets until you admit that you made a stupid deal, a stupid trade, and you, you're just a, a bunch of whining pansies. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do. That's how you hit these jackasses. Right <laughs> in the pocketbook. Okay. Thank okay, you. pal, go hit him. Go, go hit it. There you go. There's the answer for you. 767-9463. 767-WYD. We have an open line of brown. He's mad as hell, and he ain't going to take it anymore. How do you like that, Wayne Baldy? How do you like that? Here's a lady in Kendall. Hello. What's the big surprise? I mean, they absolutely could not score since January. Right. I mean, every they game couldn't score into an empty net, right? I mean, you know, I mean, they couldn't protect the lead if he held a bullet to their head. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, let's face it. Uh, I didn't think they were going to go anywhere in the playoffs. And the neither did were... I. Neither did I. But you hope for the best. I mean, if you you know you support your team, you hope like last year they were in a funk before the playoffs, and all of a sudden they uh, took off and they went ballistic. Of course, last year they had just gotten Shepard and Straka, and, and also Stu Barnes and Wooly were still on the team, right? Yeah, last, last year. Last year they could score some goals, right? Yeah. Um, and also last year the defense was playing like more sound and they were like letting in a lot of cheesy goals and letting all these odd man breaks and uh, Eddie was playing for real and not like make believe which he is this year. What did happen to him? I don't know. Boy, he got I hit by you. the dumb stick. Uh, well, anyway, we won't talk about since that trade. <coughs> yeah. But uh, oh, I'm homesick as a dog. Is there a flu going around? I don't know. Could be. Boy, I tell you. Well, anyway, I'll tell you I... one thing. I let my dogs out last night, and I went outside on the patio, and there was that smell of jasmine in the air, uh-huh. which smells real good. But that indicates to me that all the uh, crap, the pollen, and the stuff is around. Oh. So well, that that maybe could be this it. Could be an allergic reaction, but I don't think so. Maybe it's an allergic reaction to those last two uh, last three games. Very possibly. Uh -huh. Listen, on the day of your daughter's wedding, may yes? I make a request, please? Of course. Something I haven't heard in a long time. Yes. Cats in the cradle. 
Uh, cats in the Kettle. Cats in the Kettle. I bet you that's not in here, is it, sir? No. Nah. Long gone. Uh, how about then uh, the Vatican rag for your ex-nun friend here? Okay. All righty. See ya. Thank you. Okay, she's getting chronic. We have an open line in Dade, 622. We have one in Broward, 767-9463. 767 WIOD. Did I say 1214 at WIOD? Yes, I did. More cheese, please. 610 WIOD. I know that the Lord even loves Neil Rogers. First you get down on your knees, fiddle with your rosaries. Bow your head with great respect and genuflex, genuflex, genuflex. Do whatever steps you want if you have cleared them with the pontiff. Everybody say his own, Kyrie eleison, doing the Vatican right. By the way, you wreck them. Processional, step into that small confessional. They're the guy who's got religion. I'll tell you if your sin's original. If it is, try playing it safer. Drink the wine and chew the wafer. Two, four, six, eight. Time to transubstantiate. Squirt, squirt. So get down upon your knees. Fiddle with your rosaries. Bow your head with great respect and genuflect, genuflect, genuflect. Make a cross on your abdomen. When in Rome, do like a Roman. Ave Maria. Gee, it's good to see you. Getting ecstatic and sort of dramatic and doing the Vatican right. 610 WYOD. The topic today, why don't we get phone calls? Wait right there. Don't move. Hold that thought. 610 WIOD. WIOD. W Thanks for listening to WIOD. 1219 at WIO Day. Here's uh, Arvita on a mobile. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you today? Thanks for calling 610 WIO Day. You're quite welcome. You're welcome. I hey, mean, thank uh, you. Let me see. A couple things. Did you see the Sentinel this morning? Yes, I did. You saw the thing about Jovo? Yeah, and I also saw the thing in Dave Joseph's column, which is a uh, total response to me about how uh, no whining allowed. Brian Murray and uh, the coach are well, they're bewildered as to why some believe the Panthers have been whining about incidents in the series. <laughs> I'm uh, bewildered. I'm bewildered as well. So all we've been hearing is whining. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm, when I'm on hold waiting to talk to you, I'm listening, and they said tonight at 8 o'clock, RoboCop's on. So I, just, I don't know, you know, maybe there's something there. Yeah, could be. But uh, oh, I hope he's in it. At least he'll get him out of the game. And to the the one gentleman there that was speaking to you earlier about when you when you uh, pull out, so to speak, yeah. to the QAM. Yes, sir. How the uh, radio or the... Uh, Station's going to slide down the pole. They already got a good Very start. Slowly. I think they're going to plummet yeah. very quickly, rapidly down to the to the very bottom. They already have a running start. Yeah, they got a good start. Uh -huh. And I have one request. Yes, sir. I'm not too familiar with it. I think it's Blue Hands. Blue Hands. Yes. Excellent choice. That that's to me that gentleman who sings that song sounds like Frank Zappa re uh, resurrected. It is. Is it? Guitar Man. That's Frank Zappa re uh, re uh, resurrected. <laughs> Uh, all right, Neil. Have a great life. Hey, it's great to talk to you. Bye-bye. Take care. See ya. The blue hands waving at me. I like it. Nothing but blue hands on my TV. Blue hands under blue sheets. And they got nighties on their feet. Never saw the house smelling so nice. Now I'll have to lower my asking price. Nothing but containers lying on beds. All of them weird, all of them dead. Yes, blue hands waving bye bye. Going to Syria. Syria, we die. I have no line. Just, Just do it. it. 1221 at WIOD. Now, see that kind of a blue sky, blue sky. See, go back, to, and it fits right in with those rejoins. It does, that Glenn Miller sound. Welcome to the sounds of Glenn Miller. Maybe this is a tip-off on the new format, when the new people take over. I thought that was Irving Berlin. What? Blue skies. No, no, I'm talking about the rejoins. It's, sound, it's oh, Glenn yeah. Miller music they're playing in the back. Blue skies is Irving Berlin? That's what I thought. I think you may be right. How do you know that? I know a couple things. Not too much? No. About that? Here's Pompano. Hello. Neil Rogers, this is Lucifer. 
There's two things I don't have, Bud Paxson's soul and man that sings the hits. <laughs> oh, man, that was worth the price of uh, emission, if you ask me. The Mad Dog is out of control, and you'll find out why when you hear the latest release from Blockbuster Entertainment. Jim Bandage sings duets. Well, well all right! Riding around in the breeze. Well, it's all right! Here's the Mad Dog. Jim Mandage sings classic rock. felt a little bit foolish. Kind of like a eunuch in a whorehouse. But now, he says... I like it. I like it. The Mad Dog just can't kiss enough of that cottage cheese butt. If he wants me to sing God Bless America and pasties and a G-string up here, I'll do it. You got soul, and everybody knows that it's all right. Whoa, it's all right. Listen to the Mad Dog sing himself happy. All right, all right. Jim Bandit sings duets. Available now at all Blockbuster stores. Okay, be seeing you soon, Mad Dog. 1224 at WIOD. We have an open line and a purple line. Pound IOD. We have one on the out-of-town line, the Palm Beach line, the audio net line, the World Wide Web line. Oh, by the way, isn't it exciting that Vanessa and Matt are reuniting on Guiding Light on the World Wide Web? Oh, my God. How exciting, huh? Robert and uh, Tess. How cute. Here's a lady in Tamarack. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, ma'am. Hi, how you doing? Great. I have an Atkins diet question for you. Yes? What did you drink when you were on this diet? Aqua minerale. Lots of water. That's it? Yeah. Can I have wine? No. no oh, you no. mean like alcohol? You can't have no booze. No booze at all? No. Huh? Try some Crystal Light. Crystal? Oh, really? Crystal Light? Yeah, you can have that. Zero carbs. I've been reading Chapter 8 over and over trying to find some kind of an option to drink here and I'm having no luck whatsoever. As opposed to what? Well... You can have di caffeine-free diet soda, any flavor, any variety. You have all the crystal light that you can shove down your puss. You can have all the uh, bottled water with, with or without uh, frizzante. Yeah, I didn't even think of crystal light, but yeah. I, I was always a, like a big Powerade, Gatorade drinker. So now You I'm don't want that, but crystal light at least has got some taste to it. It doesn't have sugar and doesn't have any uh, carbs. Yeah, this is true. See, I would, I would say Snapple, but the only problem is I never, it never dawned on me, but Snapple being iced tea has uh -huh. got caffeine in it. The caffeine. Right. Exactly. Well, if you do have caffeine, does that slow up the process? Yes, it does. No caffeine. No caffeine whatsoever. Right. That's what the doctor says. <laughs> my doctor doesn't seem to know anything about it. Forget your doctor. Your doctor's a doctor like my dog is a doctor, okay? <laughs> like most of them. I just have one more question for you about yes, it. I don't mean to bother you on That's this. okay. Bother me all you want. <laughs> How about um, artificial sweeteners? Is equal allowed? Yes, it is. Equal the only the only thing he says in the book, which if you're reading the book in that chapter over and over again, is that some people, um, if they get slowed way down and they don't know why, that, that some people have a bad reaction. It interferes with their uh, metabolism. Because uh, I've heard from different people, they say, oh, don't touch equal. Use just plain saccharin or, or just drink a plain. So I don't know what to believe, so I figured I'd call a pro. <laughs> well, you'll find out when, as you go along because everybody's different. Yeah, this is true. You have to experiment. You have to be a little adventurous. Okay. When in doubt, try it out. I'm just stuck on what to drink. The, the well, there you great. go. We I'm solved it for you. And... We gave you the solution. Yeah, the diet's great. I'm losing weight, and it's, it, it's great, and I don't have the appetite I used to. There you go. And the energy's great, but I'm kind of stuck on what do i drink <laughs> okay thanks a lot you got Bill. it keep it up thanks bye-bye 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 bye -bye. Bye -bye now we have an open line of date six two two nine four six three we have one on a mobile one purple line if you move very fast if you pick up that instrument and give it a shot at pound iod where it's twelve twenty seven six ten w i o d more listeners than a cell phone scanner six ten w i o d 
1231 at WYOD, so it looks like Linda Energy is trying to use me as a conduit to vent her anger with the Paxson people for firing her skanky ass off the planet in the morning, and she sends me a bunch of confidential faxes. Well, they're not really faxes, they're emails, so they're not confidential, are they? Well, whatever they are, they're from Alan Mason to her, and why the hell would I want to put this on the air? Although there is one very interesting thing here that Alan Mason says, this is before they put her ass on the air, or just shortly after, before they fired her ass. And Alan Mason says, um, I'm looking forward to, to, to Neil talking about you. It's the best promotion you can get. Doesn't matter what he says as long as he gets your name right. Emery. I beg your pardon? That's her name. Let's get it right. Emery? I thought he was in Boys in the Band. Don't you remember Emery? No. You never saw the Boys in the Band? The, the new one or the old one? There's a new one? Oh, I must be thinking of something else then. No, I never saw the... Uh, the There's only the one. I never saw it. Like about 25, 26 years ago. The oh, Boys no in the Band. Fag movie. Black and white. But at any rate, uh, it was not in black and white. Oh, okay, whatever. it wasn't in black and... It was very colorful. Emery was very colorful. And like the other one said, beware the hostile fag. That was... Uh, what the hell was his name? The birthday boy. It was uh, Henry Harvey uh, Harry, whatever the hell his name was. So anyway, I'm not going to uh, read this crap on here, Linda, and find a life and go uh, find somebody else to go to bat for you because, quite frankly, I never heard your stupid show, nor do I care to anyway. And quit bugging us and try... J just the same crap she was doing with a physician there when they came in here and tried to use this show. Forget it. It ain't going to work. It's not going to happen, okay? Here's a call from New Jersey. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm calling from New York, actually. Um, well, happened? how come it says New Jersey? Well, are you, in Tenef told me. are you in Tenafly? Are you in Englewood? I'm actually uh, in, down around Colts Neck, Freehold, in that area. Oh, Freehold? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. You don't know Jackie Lee, do you? Uh, no, Bruce Springsteen. Okay, well, that's better. That's better than Jackie Lee. I think the Panthers, uh, think the Panthers took the uh, Rangers a little too lightly. Is that it? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think the Rangers have played all that great. I think the Panthers have been in a coma. Well, I don't think it would make any difference who we were playing right now. They're playing horrendous. They're playing bad. They have no spark. They got no drive. They got no offense. I agree with that, but I... I mean, I, watch, you watch these other games, man. You watch every other series except St. Louis and Detroit, which is a sleeper. But all of the other series, and it's great playoff hockey and back and forth and drama and suspense and a lot of uh, amazing stuff. I mean, at Buffalo-Ottawa series, even though it's very low scoring, it could just make the uh, hair stand right up on the back of your neck. It's so exciting. And you watch the panther Ranger series, you want to take a nap. You want to take a freaking nap. Presuming, presuming the Rangers win the series, you think they have a... a no a, chance. No, no way. Chance? No way. Do you, no. do you think they got a shot to go somewhere? I think, if they, I think if they play the Devils, they have a shot. No way. Uh, if they play Philly, I think they're in trouble. Yeah. Well, I, I, think I, they, I think it's the opposite. They had pretty good luck against Philly there. They beat them up pretty bad the last two games. Well, against New Jersey, man, New Jersey's got their number. Uh, I don't know. They haven't beat him in the playoffs yet. Well, yeah, but you're you're talking about previous years. What's going on with Leland uh, down there, Neil? They, he's, uh, they're, they're falling on hard problem. times. He's been watching the Panthers, and he's taking a page out of their book. Are you uh, ever going to get syndicated up here? Yes. When? No, Monday. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I don't know. Well, we're working on it. You should. Okay. You know, there's a lot of scrubs uh, up here that are syndicated down there. That's right. It's about time uh, you put Miami on the map. Exactly. And, uh, it's about time somebody with a brain got on the air, and uh, even me. Well, that This is true. Okay, pal. Just enjoy it. Bye. Good luck to you. See ya. Bye. Okay, there's a Ranger guy with a uh, pretty decent attitude. He's not one of these arrogant, obnoxious Guido types with a big mouth. Hey, the Rangers. And, of course, they're real Ranger fans. They know they're not playing all that great, but uh, good enough to beat us three in a row with no excuses. We have two open lines on the Palm Beach and the out-of-town lines. Like I said, those other series, like even New Jersey's, they had three games to none. And, I mean, uh, it's just a matter of time they're going to wrap up that series. But last night at the Molson Center in Montreal, and the Canadians, by the way, have lost seven consecutive playoff games going into last night. And they're right on the edge of oblivion, right on the edge of extinction. Three overtimes, triple overtime it took before finally Montreal wins that game. I mean, you could just pee in your pants. Great chances that Theodore kid, Theodore, whatever the hell his name is, in goal for Montreal. And Brodeur, of course, doing his thing and standing on his head for the Devils. Behind the net, fourth. Ralston working for it.
Now, there was a playoff game for you, man. There was playoff action. There was scintillating excitement. As Danny Gallivan would say, it's scintillating, man. As opposed to our games, which you keep saying, okay, let's just get it over with. Like that third period Tuesday. Let's just get it over with already, okay? You're praying for that clock to speed up real fast. Not fast enough, huh? Here's uh, Davey. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. The, this is 610 WAD, right? 610? Last time I checked, yeah. Okay. You, are you allowed to say 560 WQAM, the station you're going to? No. You're currently on 610 WAD, which sucks, right? Yeah. Are you allowed to say the 610 WAD sucks, the big one? No. Yeah, we can. We have an open line in Broward, 767. He said he did what? Oh, he did. Seven six. How was it? Seven six seven nine four six three. Open line in Broward, 767 WIOD. One on the other town line, the purple line, the pound line, whatever the hell that line is, the uh, green line. Sorry. At uh, 1 474 wiod I think he loves this station. I think he probably loved us until he heard these rejoins. 610 WIOD. About as functional what as What is that? Yeah. Jackets. Where did you get that from? Where did that just come from? Oh, don't tell me we got wait, let me try old... mine. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. One moment, please. There we no go. No one would confuse this with a tux. Well, where did that other one come from? More cheese, please. 610. W-I-O-D. Well, how did the other one get in there, though? That hasn't been in there. That's one of the old ones. Wonderful Isle of Dem. Oh, stop it. Get out of here. We have an open line in Broward, 767-9463, 767-WYOD, as they destroy, as they come in here plundering. People, like I said yesterday, and I'll say it again, people have been put in federal prison on death row for less than what Walter Sabo has done to this place. He is butchering it. He is killing it. He is strangling it. He is murdering it. I have never heard, even in Lakeland, Florida, they wouldn't put sounders on the air like that. Unfreaking believable No wonder John Ford's hiding. Yeah, he's on a payroll, man. He's on a payroll. Here's Miami Springs. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Great. Hey, that's good. Listen, I hate to beat a... What's, what's the expression? Beat a dead horse or whatever? Or... Beat a horse's head, yeah. Yeah, but you have... Uh, it might add a little controversy. In... No, we don't want to do that. Oh, it's not that bad. We don't want to be too controversial here. Maybe it'll get some of the women to call in. No, let's not do that. Okay. But anyway... Now... Um, I tried to get in yesterday, and we were you, you guys were talking about who washes their hands after what? Yes, sir. Now, I want to know how many women wash their hands after they take a leak. Yeah. Well, good. Tune in to Karen K tonight, because that's her topic again. We have an open line in Dade, 622-9463, 622-WIOD, and one in Broward, 767-9463. Quite frankly, I don't care who takes a leak after they wash their hands. No, seriously, if you value your private part, wouldn't it think if you're a man, and even if you're a woman, although I, it's a little bit different, but, I mean, wouldn't you wash your hands before you took a leak? Unless you, don't, like, don't bathe in the morning, isn't it much likelier that your hands have been reading the newspaper? And speaking of the newspaper, did Adam, like, leave the building to get us the Miami Herald or what? Apparently none can be found anywhere in the building. If well, there's anyone in the building... If there's anyone in the building hiding the Herald, we need the sports section because I did not see Barry Jackson's column, and evidently I mentioned in there, we'd like to find out what the hell it's all about. Probably a bunch of bull crap. Because Barry, just like Ellie Brecher, makes a lot of stuff up. Let's hear it, baby. Let's get with it. Let's get that Herald sports section here. What kind of a radio station is this, anyway, with no Miami Herald, for Christ's sakes? Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello? Neil. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Buenas tardes. How are you doing this afternoon? Great. Better than ever. Good. Glad to hear it. Fantastic. Um, Phantasmagorical. <laughs> sensational. You know, I'm, I'm, cosi, probably cosi. One, I'm probably one of the few people around here that actually stayed up to watch that Montreal game last oh night. Oh, my God. What a thriller in vanilla in Montreal that was, huh? It was It was getting kind of comatose there through the first overtime. and then the, uh, and, and then in the Yeah, well, New Jersey went into a real shell in that first overtime. I mean, they were just, uh, thank you so much, Leslie, uh, uh, Lisa. Uh, Go ahead, sir. I just, I mean, I, it was like back and forth and back and forth. I'm sitting here looking at the clock and looking at my bed and thinking, do I go to bed? Do I continue watching this? You know, they don't have a, a Chinaman's chance to win this game. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, boy. That pa this Patrice thing, Brisebois. This thing of is, all people, that frog Brisebois. <laughs> flipped that, one in there, and uh, Brodeur got a piece of the most heavy burden weight of expectoration. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh-huh. Uh, well, I, I believe it's time for us to get the shovels, time to get the uh, little white lilies and the headstone and get ready to do some burying because I don't think we have a Chinaman's chance. We've never won three in a <laughs> row all year, have we? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sure we have. Once? 
I, I remember we won four in a row at one point, yeah, like correct. about uh, February correct. or I think it was February. We weren't playing all that well anyway at that point. With Chris, yeah, well, Chris was there too, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. So any help these guys? Oh, Brooke just came in. She's finishing the show. <laughs> Unreal. Please, I beg you. Yes? Listen, Neil, can I please have a shameless request? I got it. But thank you. Well, yeah, go ahead. Um, I, it's, it's not a song. It's something I haven't heard in a long time. You know the uh, the uh, the conversation that's uh, on Fatso where they're describing what they're eating? Oh, yeah. You have I love that. That'll kill some good time so Brooke and I can bond here. Okay, great. Thanks, Neil. Okay. Bye. Have a great day. You too. Where are you going? I'm playing it right now because you just came in. It's two minutes and 36 seconds long. <laughs> I like luxury kugel. Pardon? Uh, noodle pie with chocolate chip ice cream. Mm. Pound cake with chocolate chip ice cream is good. Mm. Ring dings. Uh. And chocolate chip ice cream. Wait. Chocolate swirl ice cream, even better. That's nothing. Did you ever suck the jelly out of a jelly donut and then fill it with chocolate swirl ice cream? Uh. Mm. Uh. I like to stuff a jelly donut with Reese's peanut butter cup, then put it in a warm oven and let the chocolate and everything melt into the dough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about peanut butter and jelly on a chocolate-covered graham cracker? Mm -hmm. With thin layers of banana on top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could I have a little lemon in my water, please? Mm -hmm. I make chocolate chip cookies with M&M's instead of chocolate chip. They don't melt in your hands. Yeah. Tonya, can I have a little more lemon in my hot water, please? Mr. a lot of lemon. Uh, no, I'd like a little fresh orange you squeezed in mine, if you got it. Uh, no, sorry. Okay, then, lemon. The Crohn's, they got chocolate-covered orange wedges. The juice just dribbles down your chin. Oh. Mm. Mm. Junior, could I have just a drop of honey in this, please? Just a drop. A wedge of the actual fruit is covered with that thick, dark chocolate, you know? Oh, boy. How'd you write to stuff one of them in a donut? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get the honey, Junior. Give him the honey, Junior. It's in the cupboard, Tom. Well, get it. What else did they cover with that chocolate? I mean, besides the orange wedges, grapes, peaches, strawberries. Junior, the honey. Those big, juicy stem strawberries are dipped into that dark, dark chocolate. Get the honey! Get the honey! Look, honey, no. So anyway, okay, that was great. It killed some good time. And uh, here's Barry Jackson with another really asinine stew. But he keeps playing the same angle again about like, well, Wayne and his people are going to be really pissed off when I go to QAM. And they might just pull the Dolphin or Marlin or Panther games. You know, Barry, why don't you get a life and grow up, you stupid piece of turd? Why don't you get with it? As if these things haven't already been discussed and checked out ahead of time. And let me say it again. Not Wayne Hypinga and not Dean Jordan and not anybody else is going to tell me what to say about the Panthers or the Dolphins or the Marlins or any other goddamn thing on that radio station, okay? It's already been discussed up front. And let me also tell you that the reason that the Dolphins went off WIOD and went over there had nothing to do with Neil Rogers, which came to me almost directly from the horse's butt, but because of the money, sweetheart, which you got in the article here. What a dumb article again. Because I guess he had nothing to fill up the last column in his uh, thing here today. On and on. Wonder if Rogers will continue discouraging listeners from tuning in Panthers play-by-play -play announcer Chris Moore. I don't discourage anybody from tuning in. It's a free country. But since most of the games are on TV, and if you're at home with a TV set, why the hell would you turn listen on the radio anyway, bozo? In addition to which, wouldn't it be nice if they had enough uh, chutzpah to put it on Kiss instead of putting these games like tonight's game on uh, whatever, Waxy? So don't think just because I'm going to go to work over there, Barry Jackson, I'm going to kiss anybody's ass because it isn't in my vocabulary, unlike a lot of people I know. Not to mention any names. Anyway, 1246 at WIOD. Man, just amazing. Between Ellie Brecher and this uh, Barry Jackson guy, man, they must be uh, taking doggy downers together. They should have been on a 48-hour show last night. With a pigeon. 610 WIOD. Feel our pain. 610. 
W-I-O-D. I had one in my mouth once. I had a chick named Kay. One day she flew away to Tijuana where the moon is blue. The moon is blue. But with our right-wing censorship, there are words that mustn't slip. To truly tell you how I feel for K. Let's feel for K. So, if you see K in Tijuana, I'll see you in Tijuana too. Now, if you see K, tell her I miss her each day. And the FCC won't let me sing this song I wrote today. Now, if you see K, take her hand, gently say. After this transmission, I'll be out in 90 days. Oh, if you see K in Tijuana, then I'll see you in Tijuana. Go, wanna go, but gotta see you in Tijuana too. Oi! 1252 at WLDA. If Rogers gets out of line, the feeling here is it would take something extraordinarily outrageous to prompt Huizenga's management team to look elsewhere, meaning the Panther, Marlin, or Dolphin. If I get out of line... See, Barry Johnson, one thing you don't understand, my pudgy little fat stupid friend, one thing you don't understand is that I don't work for Wayne Hypinga over here or over there or any other place. He don't sign my paychecks and never will. And even when we had the Dolphins on this station, and let me say it again, they didn't go off having anything to do with me. He didn't control what I said on the air and wasn't going to control it. But this guy, see, this ties in with this philosophy that if you work for a station that broadcasts games, or if you work for somebody in particular, you must kiss ass. So Barry ought to be really happy with the broadcast crews for the Panthers, for example, because there's more ass licking going on than you can see in an orgy, in a Roman orgy, okay? It's unbelievable. And then he goes on to say, after a lot of other uh, caca... Although the fabulous sports babe has some terrific guests, WQAM certainly wasn't happy with the program's ratings and certainly won't mind having to drop her show to make room for Rogers. Wow, that's a bulletin, sweetheart. Major bulletin as he rambles on. Bop, 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 bop. Okay, obviously a slow sports day in the broadcast biz, nothing to write about. So anyway, getting back to her, the, uh, the Aaron uh, K, whatever the hell her name is at night there. Getting back to this one, which is just on... <laughs> wait, till you hear, wait till you hear this. She is the consultant at large, evidently, because somebody was just telling me, a little birdie in the hallway was just telling us, that during the nighttime hours, like uh, we've been having these other people ski, and who's the other guy? Do we know? Greg O. Greg, Greg o. o. Greg O. Is that his name? Greg O. Okay. She sits in the uh, control room and types little messages and uh, whispers into uh, Steve Nosering, the board op's ear, what messages to type and uh, kind of directs and orchestrates how to handle the show and screen the calls and yada yada. She's the, uh, c- the consultress. Our consultress at large, okay? Which she couldn't do a show if you held an Uzi to her head, but she's consulting other people on how we do this format and how we do the Walter Sable Let's Destroy WYOD routine, as nobody else can do any better <laughs> than she can, of course, as we all know. Oh, my. I mean, it, it's scandalous would be a compliment. She's now the consultant for other people because she sleeps with a consultant, so therefore the knowledge rubs off. Is that how it works? Here's Miami. Hello. Miami. Neil? Neil? Going, going once. Yes, sir. How you doing, buddy? Great. Neil, you're the man no matter where you're at, here, there, anywhere. Yeah, well, so tell Barry Jackson that. He can't, he can't figure that out, this Barry Jackson, this putz. <laughs> Neil, two things. Is George going to be allowed to talk when you go to QAM? George is allowed to talk now and when we go to QAM. All right. Well, that's George can do whatever the hell he wants, including smoking a lot of smoky cigars, you know, which he's he doing right little, now. He adds a little something to the to the show. A little something, yeah. You know. And let me ask you this. What's I got a little something. Deal? He's got a little something, yes? <laughs> what's the big deal about Ellen coming out on TV? None. I mean, what is that? I mean, it's called Much Ado About Nothing. It's called, it's called There's Nothing Exciting Going On, so they've got to make a big song and dance about it. Yeah, like she's something special. Right. Well, you know, that's all I've got, Neil. Who the hell would touch her with a golf club, right? No kidding, man. Exactly. Uh, Neil, can I ask you Martina wouldn't hit her over the head with a tennis racket, yes? <laughs> uh, I was wondering, I think I heard it one time, and I'm not sure if you still have it. Is there such a tape called uh, 50 Ways to Eat Your Lover? 50 Ways? To Eat Your Lover? To Eat Your to Lobster. Eat lobster. Pardon? To eat your lobster. To eat your lobster. 
We have an open line in Dave, 622-9463, 622-WIOD. And leave Alan out of this, too, by the way, okay? The problem is all inside, I bet she said to me. But the answer is easy if you practice orally. You must enhance your foreplay cunnilingually. There must be 50 ways to eat your lover. 50 ways to eat your lover. Lie flat on a back, Jack. Go down in a clam, Sam. Use a vibrating toy, Roy. Just listen to me. Click the alphabet, shit. Don't get your mouth out and suit wet. More capital T, Lee. To satisfy me. I said I treat that act with the utmost disdain. To go south with the mouth, I'm sorry, I refrain. But if you insist, then would you please explain about the 50 ways to eat your lover? 50 ways to eat your lover. Just kiss on a trim, Jim. Fuck her up on a BC. Eat a piece of that pie, guy. Now listen to me. Oi! Dive on a muff duff. Just give it enough touch. More capital T. To satisfy me. So anyway, our consultress says it's 1257 at WIOD. Hardly a talk station. We talk about important things, don't we? 610 WIOD, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. On a good night, the Palm Beaches. 610 WIOD. WIOD. Deliciously different marijuana. Deliciously different marijuana. It's not just the one to two hour. It's a phenomenon. We'll all be back, kids. <laughs> Stupendous. <laughs> oh, oh, do I gotta go? <laughs> Open the door here. Oh, oh I'm the pants. <laughs> oh. <gasps> oh. Six at WYOD. Our topic today: What brand do you like? Charmin? You like? Uh, uh, I don't even know any other brands. Name me another brand, real quick. White Cloud. White Scott. Cloud. Scott. There you go. Here's the toilet paper expert. Corona. He knows his. You can't say Corona. God. How about Juan Corona? Here's a lady in Cooper City. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes, ma'am. I got. I. I want to thank you so much. You're welcome. You know why? Why? Now and then when I feel like I want to get married, I turn you on and realize I, I'm so fortunate to be single. Yeah. Is this your real personality or are you just being obnoxious for the radio? It's a radio show. Is, is this so, your real but, personality? But, but if it, what did I just get through telling you? But if it were my real personality, in other words, you're saying that therefore if I were like that, all men would be like that? Is that it? Well, are you really like this? What did I just get through are telling you? Are you married? You? No, I'm not. Well, see. In other words, how many times have you listened to this show? Well, <laughs> how many times have you listened to this show? I clean houses, and they always have you turned on for their dogs. Right. When I come to this house, we're number you're one in we're on. number one in dogs. Yeah. And are you really like this? Or you're not yes. a nice guy? Yes, yes, I am. I'm a bastard. Yeah. 
Are you really this dumb in real life, or is this just an act for the call? No. I, huh? I was just... I mean, are you really this stupid and naive and uh, boorish in, in real life, or is it just uh, put on for this call? No, it's not put on. I'm oh, so happy Oh, that's very unfortunate. And uh, the rest of the world no... is, too. Thank God. We have an open line in Broward, 7679463. She's being forced to listen. She cleans houses. Not houses. She cleans houses. And they have this show turned on for the dogs. That's because dogs and I get along real well, sweetheart. That was great. Was that beautiful or what? She must know, well, what's her name? I don't want to mention no name. That f***ing bitch. Yeah, she must know her. Here's Ken. Doing? What is it? How's your wife doing, by the way? Oh, my wife. Same as Hank's wife. Here's Kendall. Hello. Neil Rogers. Minky. To see Veramant on Strunz. Oh, my God. <laughs> Get the Clorox out for this guy. A guy wanted to know what uh, Minky was that he reads in the uh, scripts all the time. Penis. We already found out. No, it's not. It's not? No, it's not. What it, is it? It's short for Minkyon, which is a nincompoop. Oh. And then it's see, that's wrong, used, George. That's it, wrong. It's also used as an exclamation, like Minky. I can't believe what I just heard. Like, Holy, like you know, Achapikia. Minky. Occidente. Uh, and did you ever find out what See, Strunz not... was? I heard you a few weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, Strunzo. Yes, it's short for... Uh, it's got the apostrophe because it clips the O at the end. Correct. That's another low-class uh, person. Right, clips uh, the O oh, at the end. Low-class, sloppy person. Right. And uh, Like that it, fish they just called, yeah. These are... Um, these are southern Italian dialects, uh -huh. which is called the lazy tongue. Now, is and, it is it Siciliani, or is uh, it... Uh, yes, uh, at the further south you go, the worse the Italian dialect be, uh -huh. is. And Sicily, so there's Napolitano, and then there's Siciliano. Sicily is, is looked upon as almost an entirely different language. Uh -huh. I mean, the, even the mainlanders from the south see as Sicilians as more Africans than Italians. Really? And um, they do... I wonder, I wonder if that much... includes... Don Colion. I wonder if that includes him. They do very much like what the Cubans do to the Spanish language. They butcher it. Uh, they butcher it. Uh -huh. Like a Spanish would say buenos dias, a Cuban would say buena dia, or even buena. And uh, I would like to know from you in the Hebrew, yeah. is there a female equivalent of mensch? You know something? I've always wondered that. Now, isn't that something that we can I ponder together? I have a together? Jewish lady friend, and we trade bobs. She yeah. Does it, she curses me. And I've uh, always wondered Hebrew. what the female equivalent of mensch is, and today's the day to find out. And if you say goodbye, we'll check it out. We'll find some Jew out there who can tell us. Okay, we have an open line in date, 6229463. We have one in uh, the out-of-town line, Achipikia, at one triple eight four seven four nine four six three. 479 la miseria. Occidente. All these great exclamations as in, oh, crap. Can't say crap? Okay. Here's West Palm Beach. Hello. Happy Friday, Neil. And back to you. Uh, boy, those rejoins, when I got in the car and heard that, I thought I was listening to Real Talk Radio up in Orlando. Is I, it? Is it the same crap? Identical voiceovers. Oh, no. Now the chigger comes out of the woodpile. What did I tell you? This is their formula. It's a formula like out of a package somewhere, and they think that they can sprinkle it around, and it's going to get a job. They, these people are dreaming. They think they're going to take Orlando Radio and bring it down here. And they're going to make it work in this town, in this market, where we've had real talk shows on this station for like the last eight years. They're going to bring that swill down here and peddle it on to the public. Mark, These people are dreaming. Mark my word, I bet you the next thing... That, that would be like taking Chef Boyardee to Rome and say, oh, we're going to make a fortune with this. <laughs> the next thing down the pike, more than likely, is this obnoxious character they have on uh, Rejoins uh, that explains contests and, and rules and stuff. His name's uh, Vinny Boom Bots. And he's a loud, obnoxious uh, with a New York accent, and I guarantee you that that probably... Vinny Boom next. Bots, which is something they stole from Zeta that we did 10 years ago down here, by the way. We had a guy who was Vinny Boom Bots. Real that's loud, pretty original, yeah. yeah. Real loud, gravelly voice. Uh-huh. That's him. Well, that's I mean, it may not be the same. It's, it's just another ripoff. Okay. Uh, question about your Italian Vinny classes. Boom Bots. Oh, my... G yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, is that for the beginner, or is it not really descriptive of who should uh, or shouldn't take the class down at FIU on Saturdays? Is it? Uh, well, we're, we're in uh, intermediate right now, but they have a beginner, intermediate, and advanced. There are three different ones. I don't know when the next beginner's one starts, but uh, Professor Jack, Jack Kirshner, who is the instructor, he's great. I mean, he's, he's phenomenal. And he teaches all of them? Yeah. Oh, he, he teaches six different languages. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm gonna, it's I'm great. Gonna, definitely want to check that out. Check it out. All right, man. We'll have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Arrivederci. Bye-bye. Ciao. Open line in a purse. See how well I say that? Arrivederci. Or as they say in Jersey, Arrivederci. Open line on the a purple line. That's the mobile one line at pound IOD. Mobile one pays for the call. You pick it up and stick your finger in it and see what happens, man. And when it turns purple, you know you're in good shape. 
What a what a bunch of developments we've heard today. I don't I don't know which is more amazing. These rejoins, as they they're I mean I'm I'm really on the verge of being speechless. I really am. So not only are they bringing this PD, and boy, do they lie through their teeth. Peter Bolger, you are one of the biggest freaking liars I've ever met in my life, okay? You are such a corporate ass licker. I insisted all along that between Walter Sabo and his hairy penis guy was strictly this, strictly this uh, syrupy can talk crap that they were going to bring on his station and try to reinvent. Oh, no! Oh, no, they're not going to do that. Yeah, right. And here it is being unfolded. No wonder Bolger don't come anywhere near the building anymore. You phony piece of turd. You corporate butt licker. Unbelievable. Just uh, shocking. Man, oh man, I'll tell you, by the time the sale goes through, this thing will be down to about a one share. By the time Queer Channel buys it. 113 at WIOD. The opinions expressed on WIOD are those of Neil Rogers. See, they talk a good game around here, but uh, trust him about as far as you can throw them. There are other opinions, but not for long. 610. WIOD. Well, Max may not be here anymore, but he sure left his Midas touch behind. Didn't he? Nice going, Max, you asshole, you greaseball. We have an open line on the out-of-town line. You know something? It wasn't that good anyway. We don't even worry about hearing it. It's just this great packs and equipment again, man. You remember those first, those glorious first three, four months in the studio? It was really great. Now we're kind of like uh, regenerating back to that. You notice the mini discs, by the way, you can't uh, record or do anything in here anymore, or like, uh, you can't do that. Got to go back in that little room. That's right, because things are like falling apart. But hey, we don't care, because uh, who cares? Here's Boca. Hello. Boca. Okay, nice talking to you, too. Two open lines on the uh, green lines, and thanks for calling 610 WIOD. one 474 9463 on 610 WIOD, where it's 117 at WIOD. Here's... What the hell was that? Oh, I thought you meant a break. Sorry, I was cussing at Boca Brian's answering machine. I'm giving out the call letters a lot, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing the, uh, the Walter and uh, what's-her-name uh, formula now, the Aaron uh, Gay formula. Okay, do it again. I'm sorry. It's 1, uh, 17 plus 18 seconds at 610 WIO day. <laughs> Cut it out. Quit doing that. God, what a nerd. What a spick. Here's Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Il n'est pas seulement Hank Goldberg, il est un hippopotam. Si. How you doing? Remember okay. me? Dig. I'm Did you do that? Pardon me? You're the one? Yeah, I'm the one. All right. It's been a long time, huh? Si. Dig, yesterday I went to, I'll be right with you, okay? I was, um. Tell him to wait. No, 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 no. Wait a second. I went to a Burger King. Yeah. I turned vegetarian recently, and I asked for a veggie burger. Yeah. Um, so I imagine they're going to give me a, a Whopper with... Um, yeah, they'll give you a Whopper, all right. No, but dig a Whopper with some type of vegetable patty in the middle. Right. So what they give me is a veggie hold the meat. I mean, uh, a Whopper hold the meat. Can you imagine? What, what, what does that mean? So in other words, they give you a Whopper with nothing in it? Exactly. Just, just a, a bunch of a sauce and uh, pickles, and uh, that's it? That's it. Oh, my God. And the worst, worst if they can... The guy that was working there could not explain to me what what was a veggie burger. But they have it on the menu, right? No, it's not on the menu. It's just understood that you can get it that way. But I was, I was, expecting, <laughs> I was expecting some type of vegetable patty. But I didn't yeah, get well, that. that'll teach you to go there, man. Absolutely. I see why. Bye-bye, see? then. Bye-bye now. Okay. <laughs> we have an open line, and what did he say? He ate at the Y? 6229-463, 622-WYOD. Two on the green lines, out of town, one triple eight. And thanks for calling WYOD, by the way. Thank you so much. And by the way, don't be talking on ear here no more, you producer assholes, because they go, that's not the way they do it up there in Orlando. They're going to take, I want you, seriously, I want you to all, since we're going to the weekend, I want you to ponder this over the weekend. Orlando, which is like the number 7,255th market in America, they're going to take a Mickey Mouse market like that. And because they got numbers up there, which uh, other than Howard, what have they got on the air? Not much. Because they got numbers up there, they really believe that they're going to put that swill on over here and it's going to make a gigantic impact here and they're going to do a number in this market. Like I said, that would be like taking stale halava to Tel Aviv and trying to peddle it to the Yilach over there, okay? They would take one look at you and say, Feh! That would be like taking Franco-American spaghetti without meatballs, taking it to Firenze, and trying to sell it to the uh, real Italians over there, okay? Trying to sell Guido food to Italians. They would say, what's that word? Minchia. That's what they would say. 
Here's Dania rhymes with Minkia. I my hands after I pee. Okay, nice talking to you briefly. Open line in Broward, 76794. They waste all of that time, man. They queue it up. They potchkey around. They got it queued up there, and they're on for like a half a second. They waited for 45 minutes to be on for a half a second with their material. Great. Excellent. Brilliant. Kept them off the street. Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? How's it going, man? Great. Hey, that, that caller with the veggie burger there, it sounds like he was upset because he didn't get the meat. He didn't get his meat. Oh, brother. Yeah. Hey, Neil. Um... Well, you ought to be ups upset when you don't get your meat. They promise you a Whopper, and then you don't even get any meat. Oh, well, it's, you get it your way. That's right. Hey, Neil, I, was, I wanted to ask you, I heard Brooke uh, flapping her beak there the other day about um, taking her parking space and turning it into a... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> turning it into a what? It's a handicapped spot. Yeah. She was all upset and everything. I mean, is it really that bad? Does it bother you? Well, George just gave me a wince. So what, what's her the, parking space? She doesn't have a parking That's space. That's what she says. Her usual parking space. She always. We don't. Nobody here has. She... The only people that have parking spaces here are the people from the marketing magic people, like Jack Mark and Bob Rose. You have to have two first names to have your own parking space. Yeah, she did mention that. Although Brooke that. and Daniel is very close, like Neil and Roger. Yeah. <laughs> um. Also. <laughs> yeah. Watch out, Neil. She's gonna get upset at you. She loves me. Oh man! Right. Um, she does. A while ago, somebody called her show and asked her who spoke more Yiddish, either her or you. Yeah. Who does? And she's not even close. Really? I mean, she's got her, you know, fakak to this and fakak. She's got about ten words. She's she's okay. <laughs> ten words. I mean, if she's Jewish enough to take off uh, two days on pay, 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 uh, pace over, I mean, more power to her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, Neil, She could lose a couple of pounds. Your, congratulations on your career move there. Thank you so Should much. good. Can I get a request in there? Whatever it might be, if we got it. Um, if we got it. The, I don't know the name of the song. Well, in that case. But I know it, it says something that she looks like a lady, walks like a lady, talks like a lady. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I got it. I'm Thank on you. it. Have a good day, Neil. And back to you. Bye-bye. Oh, and I sure hope that's in here because... uh Huh? I think it is. I think you're wrong. Under looks like a lady or something like that. No, that's not the name of it. I know that's not the name of it. Oh, so in other words, you put why would you why would you put that? You're wrong, man. Well, I wasn't gonna put Dick in there. Why would somebody? It's it's not in here. I know where it okay. is. I not know where it is, trust me, okay? Dick. I'll whip it out in just a second. Just relax. We have an open line in date, six two two Dick, six two two nine four six three. Here's Margate. Hello. Hey Neil, how you doing? Great. I took your advice, and uh, I got a 96 Corvette. Yes? And I love it. A 96? A 96 What's not Corvette. to like, man? What is not to like? It is outrageous. I yep. got the collector's edition. Uh, really? The silver one? Yes. That's what I got. Really? I got that, too. Yes. It is outrageous. I got a 97 silver, and I got a, a 96 collector's edition. I just got that, which don't tell Jack Lebo, but I just got that. They are, they are really beautiful. Very elegant. Yes, they are. I got a little dilemma. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going to Vegas at the end of June, and we're going to stay at either the Treasure Isle or the Mirage. What would you recommend? I've never been in Treasure Island. It's newer, but I mean, uh, I think I hear that the rooms are I, a lot newer. Right, Treasure Island. Yes. Yeah, I would try that. You wouldn't try that? I would. Oh, you would? Yeah. Okay. I don't know, Mirage, I've never stayed in the Mirage, but I've been told by some people that uh, it isn't all that great as far as the rooms. I don't know. I've never stayed there. But Treasure Island, I hear, is pretty nice. Okay, that sounds good. A uh, couple of requests? Yes. One, can you play the Donald Duck uh, I already did. thing Next? my wife? Next? I already played that. Next one? You did. Yes, I did. I just missed it. Too bad. Next one? Next one, I want to call my wife Debbie a uh, big douchebag. Okay. Thank you, Neil. See you, pal. Bye. Open line in Broward, 767-9463-767. She looked like a lady, like a lady. walked like a lady, like a lady. talked like a lady, but I got wise. There's a dick between the thighs, oh yes there is, a dick between the thighs. Ooh. You showered me with kisses. I thought you were my queen, but I noticed something funny. I saw the bulge in your jeans. She looked like a lady. Like a lady. Walked like a lady. Like a lady. Talked like a lady. But I got wise. There's a dick 
between her thighs. Oh, yes, there is a dick between her thighs. Mm -hmm. You were my perfect lover, but how I was surprised. Not only do you have one, but you're not circumcised. I have no foreskin. You looked like a lady. Looked like a lady. Walked like a lady. Walked like a lady. Talked like a lady. Like a lady. But I got wise. Roar! There's a dick between her thighs. Oh, yes, there is a dick between her thighs. Mm -hmm. So did I say it's 126 at WIOD? WIOD. The topic today, why don't we get phone calls? I don't get it. 610. WIOD. I had one in my mouth once. Okay, 131 at WIOD, kind of a pregnant pause there. We want to slow things down a little bit. Want to uh, bring us a little more low-key activity here on WIOD on the wonderful Isle of Dreams. Remember way, way, way back in the beginning when they first uh, told us about Walter Sabo? And somebody said he really uh, believes that we ought to be using that wonderful Isle of Dreams. I think it was Steve Nichol told me that. And I looked at him and I said, that's got to be a joke. And we both kind of like chuckled and he said, I don't think so. And now it's like the door is open and the lunatics have taken complete control and it's back to the wonderful Isle of Dreams again. And some Glenn Miller music. That ought to be good for about a point two share. Point one? Here's a, what's the point? Here's a mobile implantation. Hello? Hi, Neil. Yes, ma'am. I think you were looking for a word, a female word for men. Yes. I think the closest thing that you'll find is probably balabusta. Balabusta? Uh huh. As in balabosti. Right. <laughs> a little different. Uh huh. No. So I think that's about the closest you're going to find. Balabosta. Uh huh. Yeah, my mother uses that. She a does. balabost, yeah. Ah, so there you go. Okay. Anyway, can't wait for you to switch. Me too. <laughs> Especially now. Somebody suggested to me that they're doing this to aggravate me. I couldn't, I don't care if they put people picking their nose on during the redo. What do I care? What do I give a crap what they do? Yeah, exactly. There's a guitar man's got his finger up to his, uh, where his brain used to be. Man, oh man. Doesn't bother me. I mean, I know if, for, if I was going to sell a radio station, I wanted to drive the value down to about $400,000 after I bought it for $13 million. But why should that be any different from uh, selling one in, in uh, buying uh, buy one in Orlando and then selling it for $5 million and buying it back for $25 million three or four years later? Sell it for five, buy it back for $25 million. That's called good business. And by the way, Bruce Fry said they might have had that soccer franchise if Buddy Bud would have let him in on a meeting in New York. But Buddy Bud, being the great negotiator that he is, went up there and did it by himself and blew the whole thing. Nice going, Buddy Bud. All right. Like I said, there's something to be said for consistency. Here's Perrine. Hello. 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 Uh, that lady uses the word balabusta? Yes. Ballbuster? Ballbuster, right. right. That makes sense to me. Don't get Wayne pissed off. Barry Jackson will put it in the paper. Uh -oh. Hey Neil, I have a request. I'd like to hear that uh, that uh, that rabbit torture song. The rabbit torture? Oh yeah, that's the best. Rabbit torture? Yeah, I don't know. You might have it somewhere there. Elmer Fudd and Wabbits? Oh yeah, I oh. love that stuff. A widow dwarf? 
Oh, yeah, I get off on that. I bet you do. All right, okay, go get... I'd like to say, may the best of your future be the worst of your past. Okay. And maybe uh, far in your behind. Hello? Hello, I was calling about the wabbits you have for sale in the paper. Okay. What kind of wabbits are they? Okay, I have some uh, lops. Yeah. And I have some lops, some spotted lops, and some solid colored lops. Oh, wonderful. And I have a, a straight ear doe, and I have two dwarfs. A widow dwarf? They're small rabbits. Oh, okay. Uh, we have a farm. Uh huh. And we like to play with the wabbits on the farm. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have any, uh, like, little wabbit handcuffs? Any what? Little handcuffs for the wabbit. Handcuffs? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, I never heard of them. What, uh... Well, you, we, we use them when we hunt them on the farm. We like to hunt the wabbits. And we take them and nail them to a tree by their ears and then skin them alive. Uh... No, I, I, if that's what you're going to do with these rabbits, sir, I couldn't say you're a rabbit. We, we have a little game we play called All Wabbits Must Die. No, sir, no, sir, no, sir. Uh, I wouldn't say you're a rabbit uh, uh, for $50. I like to hunt the wabbit. Well, that's okay. You, you go out in the wild and you hunt rabbits, but these aren't for kill. I like to put them in a little pen and then hunt them down unmercifully. No, sir, I'm sorry. Couldn't say you're a rabbit. Sometimes we even spear them through the head with a rusty water. <laughs> 136 at WOD. My favorite segment on it, uh, well, of course, the thing with the old dog that they saved on 48 Hours last night. That was such a tearjerker. But my favorite part was the one where they had, was it a parrot? The pet parrot, and they had sat on the bird. And the bird was, like, almost crushed, and they brought it into this uh, emergency vet place and, uh, you know, tried to put the damn thing better again. Uh, Brian Andrews enjoyed that a lot, by the way. Because we understand that he's uh, sat on a bird or two in his time. That's the rumor. I'm wired. Okay, here's uh, Miami. Hello. Danny, what's going on? Good How you doing, sir? Hey, I was hearing that show um, last night. Greg uh, Coggle. Greg who? Whatever his name is. Greg Rocco. Greg Rocco? Oh! Yeah. Well, you know that they brought up these two topics. They were stupid topics. Like, you know, trying to save people's lives and stuff like that. Yeah. The one was, um, what do you, what do you, how, when did your parents ever hit you? Yeah. The next one was, did you ever cheat on somebody? Uh huh. So on the, do you ever, did you ever cheat on somebody? This guy calls up, and goes, "Oh, I'm glad you took my call because every time I call in the morning, Neil busts my chops." All right. Yeah. So this is what I kind of thought. Maybe they're setting up these calls on you to try to get it, get you out of there faster. Yeah. Well, how's that gonna? Know. How's it gonna get me out of here faster? Well, you know, try to bug you or something, you know, make yeah. you miserable. Do you, you you got it backward? You don't understand. Uh, they have to pay me through the thirtieth of September. Thirtieth of September? Right. So if they want me to leave now and write me a check or just send me a check in the mail every week, I'll be delighted not to come back on Monday. You know what I'm saying? I be I could use a few month vacation. Because you told me that Aaron bitch is a consultant now on the uh, Grocco show. No, not Aaron. It's uh, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron whatever. Karen the Gay, right? Oh well. All right, buddy, take it easy. How do you like that? Okay. Talk about the blind leading the blind. I mean, like I said, if they, if, if they stuck an Uzi up her... Rectum. She couldn't do an a, a entertaining show if her life depended on it. And she's consulting other people. Of course, that that is good, though, because that's what consultants do. They try to teach other people to do something that they themselves cannot do. So, like I said, nice going, Karen, sweetheart. Oh, my God. Here's Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hey, how are you? Great. I want to wish you a great weekend. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. It will be, because I won't be here. <laughs> That's right. I want to make a comment on the... I didn't get a chance to ask you uh, a comment. You there? I'm right here. Okay. So I haven't gone nowhere. There. Yeah, well, you know, trying to get that point eight share, you know? Yeah. The uh, the quote from uh, Mr. Paxton in the uh, newspaper of about a week and a half ago was about really wagging, tremendous. About wagging somebody other, uh, some other animal's ass? No, he said that you, re referring to Mr. Rogers, can find some other asked to wag. Right. I thought that was really nice Christian uh, uh, fellowship there. Well, let me say it again. The hour and a half meeting that I had with him about five, six weeks ago, 
every four-letter word that you've ever heard was in there, F and this and S and that and uh, God dang Italians. And I mean, the man uh, swear. I mean, I have no problem with people who swear, but don't then turn around and pretend to be a goody two-shoes and put on this phony act for the public and pretend to be this good, devout, born-again Christian and you're doing God's will and yada, 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 while you got guys in the morning here have doing live sex acts on our show in the morning. I mean, who the hell is this guy kidding? And then say, what kind of, what was that uh, whore, um, the N-word was used in a bunch of other stuff. I think it was nine ten about two mornings ago. Oh yeah, right, right. Crackhead nigger. Hole. Crackhead nigger. Hole. Right, that's it. Crackhead nigger. Yeah, right. Right. Beautiful. Very that sounds nice. like a real good Christian thing to me. I just came down from Orlando. I was up there for uh, last weekend. Yes. And I listened to some of what they call that real radio. Yes. Crap. It's embarrassing. I would agree. I mean, I I've heard a little bit of it, and of course, I did hear Erin Summers when she came down here from there, and she bombed big time. She had like one and two shares here, and uh, never made even a, a minor impact in the market. And when she finally left. Uh, there weren't like three calls even whimpering or anything. I mean, everybody was limp by that time. And, uh, you know, I, it, should, it would be like, it would be like uh, having a station in Geneva, New York, and then being promoted to New York City and taking a format from Geneva and trying to put it on a station in New York. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't work. You've no, of course at, not. You've got to look at each individual city and each individual market and decide what's going to work there. And, and they don't understand this market. They don't understand the listeners. They don't understand the way the people here respond or don't respond uh, with calls and so on. They, they think, they really believe you can take a formula and it doesn't make any difference what the market is or who the people are you stick on the ear. As long as you do the call letters right and you do everything with the calls right and structure it a certain way, you're going to be a success. These people are crazy, man. They're yeah. going to drive this thing and not into the toilet, but whatever, uh, whatever is 40 levels below it. Further, and we're going to be scraping the barnacles. And let me say this: what's even more amazing is here. Here are two radio professionals, you and I, discussing this on the air, and this is for free. You're a radio professional. This is it. Well, don't you consider yourself to be one? You said two. Are you one? Yes, I am. Oh. So they, they won't even take this as a strong hint. Yeah. They're, they're being given consult, consultation right now on the air for the last 60 seconds for free. Yeah. And they're not taking it into consideration. <laughs> yeah. They're not listening. That's right. They obviously haven't done a thing. That's because we're dumb and they're smart. You don't get it. You're not listening. You don't understand. They're smart and we're dumb, man. <laughs> they got the answers, baby. Listen, you have a wonderful, uh, if it's going to be just a weekend, have a great weekend. But okay. if you're going to get a whole bunch more out of it, I wish you the best. It sounds good to me. And when you, you and everybody else has finished migrating down to the end of the dial at 560, we'll all be there. Okay. See you, pal. Thanks. You're welcome. Arrivederci. We have an open line at Broward, 767-9463-767 on the I wonderful Isle of Dreams, man. We got to hear a whole bunch more of those rejoins all weekend. Come on, let's go. The opinions expressed on WIOD are those of Neil Rogers. How can Rogers. people believe this yeah. crap? You know what? There are other opinions, but not for long. 610. WIOD. Makes no sense whatsoever. No sense. I mean, less than no sense. And maybe it's supposed to make no sense. 610 WIOD. More listeners than a cell phone scanner. <laughs> 610 WIOD. WIOD. If you like red snapper, do, 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 pie, stone crabs, then my, oh my, you love the delicious sound of WIOD. I have just tasted your snapper. Oh, my God. How do you like that? W-I-O-D. Deliciously different marijuana. Deliciously different marijuana. I like it. Oh, God. Can this really be happening to us right on the uh, eve, right after Pesach? Right in the middle. Pesach ain't even over yet, okay? Talk about anti-Semites. The Antichrist is here, baby. How you doing? As uh, Reva would say on Guiding Light. How you doing, bud? 143 at WIOD. The opinions expressed on WIOD are those of Neil Rogers. You understand what I'm saying? No, I don't. Is it, can I ask you a question? No. Can I ask you a question? No. There are other opinions, but not for long. 610. WIOD. Walt Disney Pictures presents a touching story of a little boy named James. Uh, mm, mm. <laughs> It's huge. Siskel and Ebert say it's a stiff. Gene Shalit says somebody got the shaft. James and the Giant Penis. My name is James. Now showing at theaters everywhere. Mother 
You call that a penis? Broadcasting from the magic city, 24 hours a day. Boy! W-I-O-D. Wait a minute, did you hear that? The little bells are in there. Oh, I thought there'd be one at the end for show. Sure. you got to play that weekend one before we leave, of course, to wish everyone a nice weekend. Oh, I forgot about that. Okay, let's hear another one of those great old... Oh, they're under jingles. Sorry, let's hear some more jingles, okay? My, my, my. W-I-O-D. No, that ain't it. Oh, and there's more of them popping up here, by the way. Have a wonderful weekend on W-I-O-D. All right. Miami. Oh, all right. Real contemporary, baby. Really jazzy. Is only uh oh god, one forty nine at WYOD. Here's a so what did John say? What? What did John, John Ford? Say? Yeah. John Ford Ca- Coppola. Your good he friend. said hi. Oh, okay. No, he said he's been very busy and he stopped in. I guess uh, Harry Penis encouraged him to come in, and Harry was right behind him. Harry's uh, Valentine was right behind him, and uh, <laughs> and he said, hey, if uh, there's anything you want John to do, he's our creative services director, and he was serious. He was serious. And he walked out, and John got, like, all red in the face. I said, don't feel bad, John. I know Walter Sabo is behind all of this crap. You're not uh, coming up with these ideas. And he said, well, I've dealt with consultants before. (laughs) And I said, okay. Oh, John's a good guy. He's just, uh, you know, between a rock and a hard place. So we like you, John. Don't take it personal, but oh, my God, that stuff. Okay, let's go to a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, you can't be calling yourself a wonderful Isle of Dreams anymore. You're not on the causeway. That's right. I think it's closer to the wild issues of the desperate. Uh-huh. They're very good. I like that. Okay. Thanks. See ya. Wild issues of the desperate. I don't I don't mind that. Like between 9 p.m. and whatever in the morning after we're through auditioning all these people, like Greg, uh, oh! whatever his name is. They're serious, though. They really are. If we have anybody listening up in the Orlando area, if you can make me some air checks of uh, real radio, I'd sure love to hear that. Sure like to hear some of that stuff. Ed Till and Jim Phillips and uh, whoever, whatever they got on tonight. Sure like to hear some of those air checks and find the similarities between that and some of these real great things we got. Come with me now to visit the wonderful Isle of Dreams. 610 WIOD. Oh, my Miami, God. Fort Lauderdale. Okay. 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 Stop. I, re- I rest A my case. Stop. I rest my case. Remember that what I was talking about before? How long has it been since they blew Nickel out because they thought they were going to please me before that dinner that night at Burton Jack's? Good dinner, by the way, guys. Months, right? Was it in December? November? Whenever the hell it was. Right around that December 11th. Trade. December 11th? You know the date? Yes. How do you know that? I had a party. <laughs> yeah, but now on second oh, thought, geez. yeah, he's starting to look pretty good. But at any rate, he told me shortly before that, once they started getting this Walter Sabo stuff going, that he really believes that we got to bring back the wonderful Isle of Dreams. And here it is. Here it is. I mean, th- this is older than Methuselah's great-grandfather and Walter Sable. This ought to get the demographics down nice and low to, what, about 90-plus? In addition to which, like the guy just said, we're not on the Isle anymore. We're not on the 79th Street Causeway, so it doesn't make any sense. You got it? That's what that was all about, Walter, you jackass, you idiot, you phony baloney, you... Oh, my God. What What is this man on? Is he on some kind of doggy downers? Or what the hell is he thinking about? Want a lollipop, little boy? Here's Miami on a mobile. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. First of all, thank you very much for the chance to call you on 610 WIOD. Well, thank you very much for calling 610 WIOD. Thank you, sir. Uh, hey, I was just out. And Tennessee. welcome to our show on 610 WIOD. Thank you very much. You're it's welcome. It's a pleasure to speak to you on WIOD. Yeah, I bet it is. Yeah. Uh, the one on I'll the wonderful Isle, wonderful Isle of Dreams. We'll be got an aisle of Greg, is my line. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, was out, I, was I sure hope Walter's San... taking notes on these slogans and released his girlfriend so she can pass him along. There we go. Yeah, I was out in San Francisco last weekend and, and got a chance to see the Giants and Marlins. Yes. And they report that, uh, uh, thankfully, uh, J, uh, J.T. Snow recovered from his, uh, his incident during spring training. Right. Uh, seems to be, seems to be getting yeah, but he's hitting line. about like 105. I mean, he ain't doing nothing. <laughs> hey, we can't expect everything. Yeah. The first uh, first one. Um, now, one thing I wanted to say was if you're if you're going to take a eighty in the in the fall or whenever we, I'm I'm sure that we really don't know at this point. Yeah. But, um, if, if you do get over to if you do get over to Italy, I urge you to, to to check out the Adriatic coast. I know that usually are are Rome, Florence, uh, Milan, you know, you know that, that kind of triangle there. But yeah, if you get a chance. Train or fl- or take the train or fly to Bologna. Just head down the the Autostrada there, um, Ravenna, Limini, 
uh, all the way down to, the, to Ancona and, and even the ferry boats go over to, uh, to Dubrovnik from there. Right. How about Ascoli, yeah. how about Ascoli Pacino? They're even better, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just there south of Ancona. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a great area. I really urge you to check it out. Okay. Great. Have a great weekend. When in doubt, I'll check it out. Thanks, pal. There you go. Bye-bye. Okay, here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello, Dale. Yes, sir. Now, you're saying that uh, all these rejoins and uh, m more improvements they're making uh, won't bother you at all. Meaning what? That uh, you don't care what the station sounds like. Why should I? Well, but we we care. At yeah. least I care because I have to still listen to yeah, it. Yeah, but in other words, I, all right, but let me just say this to you. People don't listen or not listen because they like or don't like the rejoins. That I guarantee you, okay? They may, they may be annoying or they may be great and amusing, but nobody listens to a radio station because they like the rejoins or the IDs. Okay. Am I right? You don't listen to the station for the uh, rejoins. No. Right. I, I listen to this station for two reasons. Yeah. You and Rick and Suds, and I'm too lazy to change the dial at night. There you go. And there's, and uh, I, don't, I don't know, though, at the, at the rate the station's going. I got you there. Yeah. Craig might be an improvement. What might be? Let's uh, turn and dial down to the other end to hear Craig, uh, Craig Worthing. Yeah. You, at, mean, at, you mean at night? At night, yeah. Okay. As uh, as opposed to what they, the uh, contrived crap that they, they're putting on now. Yeah. And that guy, what's his face, last night. I, I called him up and you I You mean Greg, him, Greg? Greg. Oh! That one? Greg O, or whatever. Yeah. I, I, I told him it's better than uh, listening to Ron Barr or Sports Byline overnight. Uh, for four hours, same old stuff at night. So it's going to be a long uh, summer, Neil. <laughs> uh, for us, anyway. I got, plenty of be... I got plenty of vacation time coming, man. Yeah, yeah. you, it's going to be a cakewalk. You okay. might even be uh, doing uh, a Ranieri at, uh, sitting at home getting paid. Oh, I got my legs and eyes crossed. Thanks well, a lot. Have a great life. You too. Arrivederci. Here's Orlando, by the way. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, Neil. How you doing? I'm uh, I'm down in Miami about every three weeks. Listen to you all the time. Got yes, a random sir. update for you. Okay. Jim Phillips uh, about two weeks ago was giving you praise and accolades as one of the pioneers in broadcasting. Right. About two weeks ago, said uh, radio talk radio wouldn't be anything without Neil Roger, Rogers in South Florida. Right. So that means he's the one coming down to middays. <laughs> Who knows? So do me a favor. Uh, give me some air checks of real radio. Will do. On cassette. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'll be Ciao. So anyway, there you go. I just can't wait to hear the similarities between these great rejoins and IDs because it's a format just like that uh, FM out in L.A. that's bombing real big that Phil said sounds like crap. And we had that fax about yesterday about what a bomb, uh, an egg that thing is laying and about they're in real big trouble and dropping like a tank. And about those stories about WRKO in Boston that Jerry Williams told me, consulted by Walter Sabo and all that. But hey, listen, you know, those who uh, do, do, and those who don't do, uh, consult. Isn't that how that thing goes? Something like that. Anyway, 156 Panthers, by the way. Tonight's the night. Let's well, come on one more time before we get out of here. Let's go. Come on. Big finish. No whining allowed, baby. No more whining, okay? Get over it. Let's get out there tonight and uh, yank it up a little bit. And let's do it. Come on. Let me in for a big surprise. 157 at WYO.